Haha! -ha! Right at 8 o'clock. Trying, I'm trying to be better about not being like a minute or two late. Although, I guess it doesn't matter. Hello, everyone. Good evening. We are playing more of Paper Mario the Origami King. Uh, both of the people I know playing this have finished it by this point. So, uh, I have gotten a few spoilers and things, but I will try not to ruin the experience for anybody who hasn't gotten to that point. Let me see if Andrew is calling it. Not yet. That's fine. So, I'm probably going to start this doing a little bit of uh, backtracking to get the um, the various toads and things that I've missed. So, let's do this. Where was I? Pretty sure I just beat the rubber band boss, which means that I got the second streamer. And we're going on to uh, the next area, I think. In the meantime, I'm going to actually hop back and do some other stuff. So we're going to go back to the Whispering Woods first. And I guess uh, there are parts of the Whispering Woods that you can't 100% this early on. But we'll come back around to those later. I just want to get more toads to uh, help me out. And all that business. Oh, wow. I still have Bob. Uh, I just, I've been watching Coco play this. So I've seen most of the game at this point. Um, up through the ending. So... Oof, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty far behind. That's all right. Um, th that's the thing, is this is one of those games where the story is important, certainly, but um, the game isn't just about the story, it's also about the friends we make along the way and the game play that we play along the, the play? I don't know. Should have sent a poet. There's Andrew. Hello! Whoop, hold on, let me unmute you on stream. There we go. You are live. Oh, I'm live! I'm live! Mm, yes, yes. Finally getting back to Paper Mario. I, I've, I've seen most of the game through Coco's playthrough. Um, I tried to ignore uh, some of the puzzles for the bosses and things, but for the most part I know what the trajectory is here. Do me a favor, hit pause while you're here in Whispering Woods. Yes. And move over to your completion, because I want to see how many f***ing toads you found. Um, 91. Oh, so I think I'm missing all but that last one, which Coco actually figured out how to get the last one. Uh, and it's, what is it? It's pretty ridiculous. You have to, like... Uh, what is it? You have to, like... You you have to find a fire elemental um, pad... Mm -hmm. Light this fire, the the campfire, uh -huh. and there's a clam you find in the sea, and you have to like cook that clam. Where do you find a clam in the sea? I don't know. I didn't see that part. Coco just told me about it. But there's there's that that clam is the last toad for here, I think, or at least it it opens up the uh the cabin. Oh my god! It's pretty ridiculous. Oh, do I have to go like fishing for it or something? Maybe. Oh, it must be when you go out on the boat. Uh, yeah, probably. Oh, God. Yeah. Fucking bullshit. It's pretty ridiculous. Alright, um... I actually... It looks like I've gotten most of the toads here. What am I missing, then? Uh, not bottomless holes. This is, uh... Mm. You know, actually, I think I'm doing alright on toads. I'll probably do the uh, toad run tomorrow. Um, and for yeah, now, I will just... Con can't... Was that? Yeah. Well, especially since you don't have the fire of elemental yet. Yeah, I think, honestly, I'm just... I'll, I'll, I want to take some time to just, like, 100% some of the older areas, but I actually think I'll probably wait until I get the uh, radars for the hidden block and the treasure first. I'm not worrying about 100%ing it anymore. It's... Yeah. Unless there's a secret ending you get from it, I'm not worried about it. There may be. Oh, oh. Uh -oh. oh there's a little static. There's a guy on an Sorry. island who says there's a clam. A cl there's a clam? Okay. <clears throat> what is... Apparently I didn't find all the toads on Moon Island either, so... Hmm, okay. Just gonna... Hey, my audio... For the game is like real low. What's going on with that? Me steppy. 
That's good. Okay, that's minus 30. That's pretty good. Um, let's see. Last thing that happened was the boulder fell on Olivia, so I gotta go to the port. Yeah. Arguing through text will have you standing in one place for 47 minutes. Oh my god. No fooling. Like, I'll be on... There are moments where, like, I'll be on the couch watching something, uh... And, like, four episodes later, I realized, like, no, I've been just angrily texting a, a client trying to explain to them basics of my job for the last hour. Or, like, your friend telling you that he thinks the Empire are the good guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah something like that. <laughs> well, that, that one especially, because that one, I'm going to be busting out citations... I'm gonna be I'm gonna be c c interviewing experts over Zoom and stuff and and sending the recordings. Make a PowerPoint presentation like Andrew, and you just you know. Oh, more! I'll make a full video essay. I don't give a toot. I dare you. <laughs> it's not worth Go it. Go Lindsay Ellis style. Make an hour-long video essay. Oh God, I I don't think it's really even that necessary. In fact, I think she basically did that video? Well, no. Hers was on the First Order, specifically. See Linkara, uh, his newest videos? I haven't been following Linkara for a long while. Is he still doing the same kind of thing? Yeah. Okay. Good for him. I, I hope he's in he enjoys doing it. I mean, he's done yeah. it for quite a while. He's married now. Hmm. Really? To, to Liz? No, they broke up a long time ago. Oh wow, yeah, that's that's how long ago I stopped watching his stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, oh god, are you okay? <laughs> Andrew, no! Um, no, don't die on my stream, it's against the terms of policy. <sighs> oh, the boat. Okay. So... Oh, jeez. Uh, oh, no. I didn't realize... Oh, boy, because I saw Coco with the fully upgraded boat. I didn't realize how slow the standard speed is. Oof. All right. Eh. Uh, you were saying? I don't remember. Aw, oh, dang. Is there any new wrestling news? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Horrible. Oh no. Like, really bad wrestling news. Oh no. Do you remember the late 90s, there was a group called the Nation of Domination? Vaguely. I was still pretty young at the time. We are the Nation of Domination. Dun, dun. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's ringing a bell. I'm not going to remember Ron many details, Simmons. but... Ron Simmons, a.k.a. at the time, Farouk. Mm. Uh, D'Lo Brown. Mark Henry, The Godfather, and The Rock. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. That's where I'm hearing it, because I've, I've watched so many compilations of old The Rock uh, spots and matches that that's definitely popped up once or twice. Wave battle. Uh, do, do, do. how do I wanna? Hmm. Oh wait, I see. So, what about the Nation of Domination? What's happening? Hello. Hello. Are you Are you there? Hold on. Hold on. He'll be back any minute. In the meantime, I gotta hammer some fish. Ooh. Nice. Oh, man, having seen like what some of the items that you end up getting later are, it's uh, it, it's surprising to think how many different variations on blank hammer they were able to think up. Uh, ooh. Ah, okay, I see. Bop and bop. Shiny boots. Okay. The one thing that 
I'm always sad about is that I can't take a second to read what the toads are saying. Because they're saying a lot of funny things. When someone else is playing, you can enjoy all that, but when you're playing, you're so laser focused on the actual fight. Although there are some, uh, there are some. There you are. Where did you go? Hello? Yeah, I do you you went silent, so I don't know I don't know which end that was on, but something's Dude, up. Wrong with you. I could see you speaking, but you didn't get a little green ring around you, but I got green ring. Mmm. I mean my my mic and everything's working from this end, so I don't know what was up. But anyway. Yes. The Nation of Domination was analogous today to the Black Lives Matter movement, but if they were bad guys. Oh. Okay. So Vince McMahon wanted to bring them back. That's not not a good time. <clears throat> and guess who he wanted to have in the group? I'm guessing members of the New Day. No, that would have been if it were a face group. I mean, yeah, wanted, but knowing him, eh, I don't know. <clears throat> he wanted MVP. He wanted Bobby Lashley mm. and others. Hmm. Both of them are very much heels. Right. So I repeat. They wanted to have a pro-black pride group. Right. <clears throat> Headed up by heels in this the year of our Lord 2020. Written by a 70 plus year old white guy who is friends with Donald Trump. Yeah. In this the year of our Lord 2020. Yikes. Yeah, I don't I do not see that going even remotely well. Are they uh are they still going forward with that or did somebody somebody step in and be that? Uh, is there anyone who can really step in on Vince and be like N no, we ca we can't. Vince, no. Well, they don't know. The reporters don't know what stopped it. <clears throat> All they know is Ron Simmons was there and on last night or last Monday's Raw, this past Monday. Right. Also, ignore him and just start going off on your own because you can't get in that fucking elevator anyway. Mm, yeah, I, I figured as much. Actually, do it because he won't shut the fuck up if you don't. So. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, let's see. But. But um. Elevator. Ah, oh, jeez, it's not uh, working. Oh, the power's out, obviously. Yeah. So I went off not knowing about that. Mm-hmm. And he would not shut up. The entire time. Every time I went in the room, Mario, what are you doing? The elevator's the other way. At least, I mean, on one hand, that's not as bad as Olivia being, like, actively stopping you if you go outside of the specific range. But at the same time, I feel like that's worse because it, like, makes you think that it's optional because they've trained you to think that if it's something you have to do, they'll stop you and won't let, allow you to continue. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, they wanted the, the nation back. Mm. Oh. So that would have only gone well, you know. Uh, let's see, what other wrestling news was there? Oh. Road Dog <coughs> went mask off the other night. And FTR had some choice words for them. Or for him. Not on that subject, but just furthering my dislike for Road Dog. Mm-hmm. Uh, Road Dog Jesse James. Yeah. Which was, uh... Dax Harwood tweeted, It's Shawn Michaels' birthday. Here's a picture of the greatest wrestler to ever lace up a pair of wrestling boots. And it's a picture of Bret Hart. Yeah. Shawn Michaels' longtime rival. Mm -hmm. To which Miro, aka Rusev, tweeted, No, at? And Brian James, aka Road Dog, said, No guts. Be well, Miro. God bless you, dude. So Cash Wheeler said, yeah, man, we're the ones with no guts. Definitely not you. Be well. Oof. To which Jesse James was like, definitely not. De and Cash Wheeler dropped in. 
Definitely a good guy that never talked shit about talent as soon as they'd walk away. Definitely wouldn't try to bury anyone that disagreed with him. Definitely. Damn. Wow, I thought we were cool, just kind of ribbon. I see one of us wasn't. My bad, dude. Good luck to y'all. <laughs> just like, dang, I thought we were just having fun burying talent and disagree that we disagreed with and talking crap about them behind their back. That's always like the 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 excuse. I remember on AEW Unrestricted, Jr. talks about how like for decades it's always been wrestlers' excuse when they step over the line. We're just ribbing you. Yeah, we're just, just ribbing. ribbing. It's just like, ribbing. no, you weren't. You were you were trying to talk crap, and as soon as I stood up for myself, you were like, oh, I'm just gonna deflect that. Deflect that back. You're being unreasonable. I'm just joking. It's like, no, you, you weren't, bud. Uh, let's see. AJ Styles said never say never regarding going to AEW. Mm. Uh, let's see. Uh, WWE star says we're in the golden age of wrestling. And for once, didn't just mean WWE. Hmm. Uh, Seth Rollins. I can agree with that. I what? can agree that. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just trying agree. to work out this. Po- oh, wait, I, I I got it. Oh, and the biggest wrestling news of the day. Mm-hmm. Cody's next TNT champion. Yes. Challenge oh, my God. Deal. Confirmed. Uh, and it, it, it was summed up pretty spectacularly by one of the comments, which was like, don't ever try and say that AEW doesn't listen to the fans, because this is exactly what everybody was clamoring for. Yeah. So and for those of you who don't know, the answer is War Horse. War Horse. War Horse. And here's War the thing. Stats. Even if that's an exhibition, that's just one step closer to our boy Danhausen mm-hmm. having a match. God, I want Cody versus Danhausen. Oh my just God. to see Cody like getting angrier and more confused that he doesn't get what's going on. Right. The character, not the actual, like clearly Cody would get it, but like, oh yeah, Cody Runnels gets it immediately. Cody Rhodes is angered and confused by. That's what well, that's Dan Housen's whole shtick is. He's he's an agent of chaos. He just keeps you guessing. My God, I I am hoping. Ooh, is that like, what I want to do? Hmm. War Horse is going to be such a good match. Oh yeah. Mikey Ruckus, ever since it was revealed, has been talking about, like, you guys, this is exactly the kind of theme music I've always wanted to do. Like, so we confirmed War Horse gets theme music. Oh, oh, awesome. Uh, and if, he, if this match goes just... well, which, I mean, how could it not? Uh, who knows? Maybe he'll get a sign. Is he a free agent right now? Yeah. 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 And War Horse does rule ass. Mm. Oh, 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 oh. <clears throat> yeah, I'm I'm super excited for it. I mean, I'm excited for Diamond pretty much every week, but it's always great when there's a specific match on the card that's just oh, it's beautiful. Cody has legitimately made every episode exciting by making it such that uh you want to see who he's going to defend against next yeah absolutely and like he's solid enough that uh no matter who he's defending against i feel like it's still going to be a great match (coughs) yeah yeah and for a lot of these indie guys like Eddie Kingston, Ricky Starks at the time, War Horse, etc. Mm-hmm. These are guys who aren't getting paid right now. That's true, yeah, since they're not under contract and, well, no with uh, with all those shows. suplexes happening, uh, can't, can't get work in most indie rings right now. Yeah, and so... A lot of them are doing, you know, cameo or putting out their PayPal's or their uh, Patreons and whatnot because yes. they're just not getting paid. And this, well, yeah, can't sign all these great talent. At least they're getting a decent paycheck, you know. Now here's my question: since 
the, technically with Patreon, the concept is you are supporting someone who you believe in their artistic work, their creative work, whatever it is. Um, but there is always the reward. So what do you think would be the most um, valuable, like, uh, incentive tiers for a wrestler's Patreon? Um, I don't really know much about Patreon. I don't. It's like I mean it's I similar to <laughs> similar to Kickstarter. You have different tiers that you can back at that they charge monthly. Yeah, I I, I get that. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, obviously, merch at a certain level would have to be a thing. Oh sure, it's it's tricky because with the monthly <laughs> thing, if you promise yeah. merch, then you kind of have to continue the merch monthly. Um, premium content would Ooh, have yeah. to be. Uh, a common like one. Have, that's really all you could really do. Well, a I common one is a uh, a common one is like a Discord or Zoom hangout, like once a month. Yeah, I love wrestling. I don't think I could have a Discord server full of wrestling fans that yeah. pay to talk to me. Like I'm good. I well, that's my thing too, because they've been having the contest every week, the uh, picture in picture contest with. People getting like a, a pro wrestling tee prize package, and the grand prize winner gets to have a Zoom call with a AEW talent. I heard Chris Jericho yeah. at some point, although now they've kind of pulled back, so it might not necessarily be him. Um, but my thing is like, if I entered that, I'd want to know if I could trade trade down to one of the the merch packages, because as much as I like these wrestlers, I don't know what the hell I'd talk to them about. I don't know, and like you, your your immediate reaction would be like, "Hey, tell me about like the insidious shit, like ooh, the you know spill the tea." Like, mm -hmm. I don't want them to do that. Like, I don't want them to feel like they have to do that. Like, they get enough of that on Twitter and whatnot. Like, I'd rather just like, "Hey, man, tell me about your favorite matches," you know, or yeah. You know, tell me, you know, like, what's something you're looking forward to? You know, like, everything you want to ask them would require them to break kayfabe. I don't want them to feel like they have to do that. Yeah, that's you the know? big and thing. And I don't want them to feel like they have to perform the entire time either. You know, that's just a dick move. Right. So, like, what could you possibly do or say that wouldn't be that kind of a thing, like, there's no answer. So, for me... Yeah, I, and the, the thing is, too, like, they're they're on, like, another level. Like, even a couple years back, going to see Voltaire live and going to, like, buy some merch and get it signed, even then I felt, like, nervous and weird because it's like, I know so much about this person and their work and I've listened to it for so long. What do I even, like, ask and say? Like, how do I not look like a... a, a idiot creeper or, or yeah yeah it's it's a weird like, dynamic so i got to interview him one time yeah you've told me about that before <clears throat> so i asked him if you could be like i told him i'm sure you're tired of like the serious questions that you know you just want to have fun for once so i will ask just silly questions nice and he was like that that'll be fun and so, like, one of the questions was, if you could be any alcoholic beverage, what would you be? Mm. And he literally stopped. It was just like, oh. And you could see him, like, thinking about it. And he finally answered, I'd want to be a hot toddy. Because mm. then I'd be in some little old lady's stomach and there could be no safer place in the world. <laughs> but I wouldn't want to be a shot of pure scotch or whiskey. Because then I'd be in Shane McGowan's stomach. And that's the most horrifying... Or no, no, no. I wouldn't want to be uh, whatever his drink of choice is. Right. Because then I'd be in my own stomach. And that's the scariest place <laughs> I can imagine. Except for Shane McGowan's mouth. <laughs> I was like, damn, I actually got that joke. That's it good. was a that's, a... that's a mean joke if you get it. But like, uh, yeah. He, he was really uh, nice. Uh, he hugged me. Oh yeah, he smells nice. Nice. Oh. So it was it was like a live interview and not 
over yeah, yeah. or something. Okay, yeah. where uh, how do you like set it up? Like, was it at a convention or something? No, it was at a burlesque show. Oh, okay. Which I learned was French for not quite stripping. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what it was. It was like. It's much. It's so. It's more theatrical. It has a little bit of an element. No, of no, no. That, but You're thinking of good burlesque. I'm talking about what I saw. That's also. That's also always the thing. What I saw was young women who are very good dancers, mm-hmm. who clearly wanted to do ballet, but they clearly just could not get picked up anywhere. Oh yeah, it's super competitive. Um, oh wait, that, that window like, cracked. Okay. Those girls were amazing dancers Mm. then there were the women who uh, were much older who clearly came from the strip clubs that wouldn't hire them anymore Mm. and like this was you know 10 years ago so you know online options weren't what they are today Um, yeah and so it was just like very like it was a very noticeable difference in the age and style of dance, because mm. like the younger women were doing these incredible like Halloween cosplays and uh, just really well done choreographed you know dances with uh, singers and everything. It was so cool, and then um, they had the older women who were clearly doing routines they had done in clubs years earlier yeah and it was kind of uncomfortable to watch you're just watching like oh i see like you weren't it wasn't bad it was just like ah okay yeah it it, it was uncomfortable i mean yeah, there's not really much more to be said for that. It's 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 not a huge thing in Seattle, but it is something that is definitely like seen somewhat of a resurgence because there's a lot of artsy people there who are into things like dance and performance art and yes. a lot of uh freedom of that particular uh sort. Style. Yeah, who are it's much more uh positive towards that kind of thing. So there's a lot more, um, there's just a lot more of it and mostly high quality. I didn't end up seeing that much when I lived there. Um, think. but yeah, he was performing in the middle and he was definitely the most, uh, entertaining and he, he got more cheers than the women. Mm, yeah that is not to say he was more talented than some of the women it was just uninteresting yeah oh so uh truth or fiction headline Uh is pepper spraying medical supplies a war crime yes it is yeah and that's what federal agents did in portland yeah, and the worst part is everybody's like, uh, the Geneva's Convention doesn't cover your own citizens, and it's like, it, it, that's that's worse though. You you understand that, right? It's 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 bad. It's much worse if you're doing it to your own citizens. Oh, I I just pulled up uh, Russell Talks um coverage of tonight's episode of SmackDown. Mm-hmm. And it goes in chronological order from bottom to top because as they update, they put in the next segment at the top. Right. So bar fight hype started off the show. Hmm. Oh, God. The very first words of the show were Jeff Hardy saying, my name is Jeff Hardy and I'm an alcoholic. Oh, they're still doing that, huh? Yeah, it's a bar fight. I guess. I, uh... So then, gross. Then there's this headline. You might not realize it, but wrestling is happening. Oof. Uh, Banks and Bailey were on commentary, which instantly made it more unbearable than usual. 
Hmm. Bliss and Cross were having a perfectly good pro wrestling match, but it was very hard to pay attention because commentary was focused on talking about being best friends instead of wrestling. The match right. started off as friendly competition, but there were some slaps thrown in here and there. It started to get a bit more heated. You wouldn't know this because the director decided it was better to show Bailey and Banks sat down talking to each other instead. Eventually, the action spilled to the outside, and Bliss and Cross remembered they have common enemies, so they team up and knock them down instead. The sad part is we went straight to commercials after this, so they'll probably be back up by the time the show resumes. Oof. Jesus, WWE. Oh, and Vince McMahon has finally given up on the idea that we will be having uh, SummerSlam in Boston. Right. But has not given up on the idea of having live fans in attendance. It's not going to happen, dude. They are just... uh, The restrictions are getting tighter and tighter every day, so the idea that there's going to be loose enough restrictions to allow that by then... Like, I get it. We tried, guys, but it was just way too early. We started opening way, way too early, and we should not have. So people acting like we're just going to continue with reopening and not immediately pull it way, way back are are just... It's just foolishness. It's not going to happen. If it does, it's a bad idea. Yeah. Oh, there was one governor who was like, yes, we'll be reopening the schools, but my grandkids won't be going. Yeah, of course. Uh, we're going to be focused on distance learning in the upcoming year. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why is that, governor? Tell me with words from your mouth hole. Words that don't make you sound like a horrible hypocrite. Oh, it's because poor people are not as useful to you as, you know, the money that they can get you. Is that it? Uh, Is that it, bud? Yeah. Oh, there's some interesting news Mm -hmm. um, for PS Plus owners. Oh? Um, Apparently, some PS Plus recipients have been getting uh, store credit. Store credit? Yeah, from PlayStation. Was this, like, announced, or is this just coming out of the blue? Uh, there was a news article on it, but it seems, uh, PS Plus store credit. Hmm. Uh, do I want to, how do I want Sony to? Sony sending free PS store credit to PS Plus members. Uh, to find out whether you received any, you can find it by go browsing the notifications section on the PS4 dashboard, hitting the options button, button, select from PlayStation, and see if you have a new message. If hmm. you have it, then you will get a... Uh, uh, Are you doing that right now? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't blame you. That's that's very interesting. It makes me I'm think of... I'm hitting options... On notifications, I'm seeing notification settings, uploads, downloads, and delete. So maybe I'm um, hmm. not looking at the right part. I remember back in the day, um, they had like a, a leak, like an info leak, where a lot of people's uh, personal information got leaked. And their idea to uh, make up for that was to give you one of like three games for free so you got to pick the game but it uh it was probably not a game you cared about to begin with Uh, um uploads maybe hmm well they said messages right i mean the notifications notifications hmm i'll check messages privacy settings Oh, oh, watch out. Yeah. Oh, come on. I gotta sign in. Mm. Yeah, that's half the reason I don't use PlayStation as much, is just because it, once it logs you out, it's like, I don't want to go and f- remember my password, change it if I can't remember it, all that nonsense. My password's pretty easy, but... 
<clears throat> no, um, that's not what I want, is it? Uh, hmm. And, like, there doesn't seem to be any noticeable criteria for, like, who gets the ten dollars? Right. That's how much it is. Hmm. Um, just. Whoops. When did I get a friend request in November? Who sent me a fucking uh -huh. friend request? Oh, it was you. No, was it? No, I, I sent you a friend request and you never accepted it. Oh god damn it! I don't know. I generally don't use the PlayStation that much. Like, if I'm going to play a game, it's either going to be on my phone, uh, my Switch, or my computer. I mostly play PlayStation to play multiplayer with Coco and or Corey and or Clark. I'm not seeing anything about it on mine, but... Mm. Hey, check your PlayStation Plus notifications, folks. Maybe check you'll out, get... Check out your PlayStation Plus. Who knows... Who knows what you might have got? Maybe you got ten bucks. You can't spend it on a little some some. And I'll buy you a heap and help in a bubble gum. Right. You know how much bubble gum I buy you? Let's buy you a lot, but you go to Dollar Tree, you get you get yourself some fruit stripe. You know, I buy you ten bubble gum. You ever actually have fruit stripe? I got some as just like a nostalgia thing because I haven't had it since I was a kid, and uh. Oh wow, yeah, that's the pretty awful. Just appears within. Yeah, it's it's instantaneous. The flavor is just gone. Choo choo. But you get like ten of them for a dollar, so. Huh? Who knows? Not me. I never lost control. Mm. I mostly just go with extra because they uh a, 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 what you call it uh ex if you get like mouth noise and those kind of no what you call it's a candy bar not a gum it's true it's a pretty good one if I remember I never think to get it but anytime I've had one I'm like oh this is this is kind of delicious. What's I'm very one? sad that you didn't recognize the song I was referencing. Oh, I recognize. Oh, to get up. It's, there, a, it's the man who sold the world. Uh, but... Now, the, here's the question. Were you doing the David Bowie version or the Nirvana version? You you said man who sold the world and you left. Uh, I was about to tell you to fix, to go get that, but you figured it out. Yeah. Um. Is it the Nirvana version or the David Bowie version you were going for? I mean, either. They're both okay. Well, the 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 only real difference is that Kurt Cobain completely mumbled the all oh, the ruins there line. Like if you listen to that, it's like he's like, oh, this is one of my favorite David Bowie songs, and then he launches into it. But it's like he's using sheet music and he gets the lyrics really wrong. So I feel like he doesn't <laughs> know it that well, or rather, didn't know it that well. Rest in pasta, Kurt Cobain. Oh, dang, my audio's out. Hold on. Hold on, I gotta do... Yeah. Gotta reset the Elgato. I don't know why it does this. The audio will just cut out. Did that do it? Did that fix it? Is it making sound now? Come on, there it is. Do... Is that what you're hearing on my end? Oh boy, hold on, I might have to do that for this mic as well. Let me try that. Or actually, shoot, it might be the wrong mic is why. Hold on, hold on. No, that's the correct microphone. Can you hear me? Yeah, that's on that's on his end. Hold on. Listen, I know that's not fully you doing that, but regardless, I gotta I gotta take it somewhat seriously. I'm trying to run a show here. Let's try that again. 
Hello. No, I was messing with you, right? Well, I, at least for the end part of that, were the other issues actually happening? Or is has it been a ruse from the start? Diggy, there is no stream. No. What? What's all this equipment for? Keeping you alive. You're in a coma. Wake up. No, not again. Hey, what? That's where it is, right? Where is he? Where is this toad? Uh. <sighs> How do I? Someone got a Gmail from DonaldTrump.com that just says racist. Oh, I mean. <laughs> Keeping it, keeping it succinct, guys. Concise. That's what I look for. Oh, jeez. The, uh, some uh, of these sections get a little loud. Let me pop that down to, like, maybe 15. Going through all of Einstein's math looks like it checks out. Yeah. Is uh, he, is this toad good? Did I get him, or? Okay. Bob, no, move. Move, Bob. I'm trying to hit the toad. Uh, I think I think that's about all I'm getting out of that guy. <sighs> oh, Lord. What now? Uh, a Twitter couple that I follow got matching t-shirts of themselves holding hands. Aw, that's sweet. Yeah, the one was like, did you know I'm one half of the most sickeningly sweet couple in the entirety of existence? We brought tea. I'll send it to you and Kepika. Sure. If um, you insist. Question. Hit me. Have So... Have you been watching, I know you're not super into Zelda, but have you been watching the Link Between Worlds playthrough as it came back uh, from Grumps? Yeah. yeah. How do you feel about them stealing our idea of just talking over pre-done footage? You did that first. You know, it hurts, but... It hurts, but... You know... Not every trendsetter gets the credit they deserve. That's true. As actually, Aaron Hansen himself point out, he's like, I I take pride in the fact that I set up a trend even if people don't know it. Aaron, my heart. I expected better of Ego Raptor Hansen. Aaron Ego Raptor Raptorson. Uh, did you see Anthony Fauci throwing out the first pitch of the game? No. Was it? Was it? It went wide to the right of the pitchers or the catchers. Oh. No, like you know the like circle that they stand in mm -hmm. to catch and bat. Right. It bounced on the outside of that circle to the far right of the camera. Oof. To which somebody replied, uh, "Dr. Fauci doesn't want people catching anything. Respect the consistency." <laughs> Well, honestly, such a good joke. Ugh, my knees. Oh God, I don't. My knees have taken like a serious beating with all the the exercise I've been doing. Um, which I mean, it's it's not the worst. I give myself at least two days of recovery each week, but like, man, joint pain. It did, did you hear the? Uh, dumb news today. No. Where press secretary for the president said that Paw Patrol was canceled because of left-leaning people trying to cancel the cops. No. And Paw Patrol was like, no, we're not. We're renewed for another season in a movie. Yeah, they're incredibly popular. Although, I mean, they really should do something about the fact that the main one's a cop, but, eh. <laughs> I do, I do like, uh, uh, the idea of, um, bringing back Brooklyn Nine-Nine next season and they're just a male office now. I don't like, uh, 
Sandberg, so I don't give a rat's ass either way about Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yeah, I mean, right now it Terry is. Terry Crews is stupidly problematic. He yes, uh, he's been he's made no bones about that, which is unfortunate. The, the the worst part about it to me is that he's definitely well-meaning. Like he just does not he just has not taken enough time to research and like educate himself enough on the topic. Like he he definitely is doing what he thinks is right, but it's just it's kind of ignorant and it's it sucks cuz I feel like he could do a lot better if he actually took a little more time. What do you think of the uh, Darby Allen and Orange Cassidy figures coming out? Oh, I had not heard about that. Um, there's a guy releasing uh, geezes and eventually full shots of them. Mm. Um, so there's Darby Allen, uh, there's a sculpt of the Darby Allen one that includes a jacket. Uh, nice. It comes with a skateboard. There's a pack one. Um, okay. And are these official through the uh, same line as before, or is it... Uh... I believe so, yeah. Nice. Somebody put uh, Orange Cassidy, or one of them put an Orange Cassidy shirt and jacket on Cody Rhodes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There's an Orange Cassidy one. Uh, sending all this on Twitter to Young Coco. Um, Let me make sure that the camera's framed up correctly. Now, these are digital. You can tell with some of the close ups. Sure. Um, but Orange Cassidy, you know, his looks really good. Nice. Um, I'm glad, like, that's the one I'd want the most. TBH. Like, I want all of them, but, like, Orange Cassidy is easily my favorite wrestler on the roster. Uh, he's got a match this coming dark. Uh, I need to catch up. It's been on my to-do list, like, week after week, like, catch up on dark and BTE, and it's like, I just... Uh, I've been so busy. I'm trying to do stuff with my life, you know? It's yeah. hard to be a fan of a thing while also trying to do other things. What am I doing wrong? Is this not how you trigger this? Hmm. I would love to see, like, Pax figure against his, uh, Neville figure. Ooh. I actually don't know as much about him as Neville, so... Don't. Just... <laughs> it's not worth don't. it. Don't. No. Okay. No. It's... Like, when he was Adrian Neville in uh, NXT, he was good. Right. When he went to the main roster and became one of the victims of name loss and just became Neville, they made him a proto-superhero. And so depressing what they did. Yeah... Uh, I mean, that's just, it's, like, story as old as time at this point. Someone great on NXT gets, gets, uh, how did you put it, uh, goes up to, goes up to the main roster and they just get completely ruined. Uh, Finn Balor was the first one for me that they did that to. Because mm -hmm. I caught him on NXT in 20... The very end of 2014, very beginning of 2015, because we had just moved to Savannah, All right. and we had Hulu, and mm -hmm. I was like, oh look, Hulu has uh, WWE on it, I'm gonna tune in and watch an episode, it's probably gonna suck, right. and it was actually okay at the time, because I hadn't been invested in it for years so i didn't know the people i was like oh this isn't bad i was like oh well clearly this is what's gonna happen and like i got into it i got into cody who was at the time stardust mm -hmm. and i was like and i started getting into the vaccine stuff and that's what got me into the uh 
Wrestle Talk got me into the Indies. That got me into Ring of Honor, which got me into the Bullet Club, which got me into Cody when he joined Bullet Club, mm. which has led to AEW. Right. So. What is this box? The show really, really went downhill very quickly. By the end of 2015, I was like, WWE, what the fuck are you doing? And by the it, like, I gave up on WWE. I was like, because NXT was on Hulu as well. I was like, well, they're bringing this guy up. They can't screw him up. And they would screw him up. I was like, well, they're bringing up this person. There's no way they fuck that up. They'd fuck it up. Like, no matter who it was, they could not bring up anybody except for the women and not fuck it up. Yeah, I, it, to the point where it almost felt like a science. The way that they, they would just perfectly wreck uh, someone who already had a solid gimmick and a fan base. Yeah. Um, and it was depressing. So I was like, I, I think I'm done. So I switched over to not watching. And instead, <laughs> uh, I just watched the backstage stuff until you know, Ring of Honor. And Ring of Honor needs to do some work to fix their problems. Like, they got some fucked up shit going on as well. Yeah. But they're working on it. Uh, hmm. Oh, what? what? One day without a freaky story is all I ask, says Charles P. Pierce. Uh, in response to... Virginia and Utah residents advised against planting mysterious seeds marked with Chinese writing. Um, what? I, what is is everything okay? What is this? No, nothing. Nothing is okay. Why? Well, that like? Oh, you met with this? Hmm. Are you, are you there? Hello? No, not again! He's left us. Left us to wonder what the, the end of that sentence may be. Well, we'll hear back from him in a little bit, I'm sure. In the meantime, I'm finding bugs. Yeah. Watch out! Watch out! What are these guys called? Hold on, I will know in a second. Yep. They are called Scuttlebugs. Nice. Alright, let's do this. Yep. 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 Yeah. No, my shiny boots. Ooh, what is a plumber without his shiny boots? God, that's a serious fake out move. They get you thinking that they're gonna jump right on you, and then nope, nope, get you from behind. Against the rules. Not okay with me. I'm gone again. You're gone. I am here. I am definitely here. Everything's going. I'm not seeing you. You're... Did you mute yourself? Because there's nothing happening on uh, your... 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 Uh, b -b 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 the, 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 the thing. There you are. Swear to God, that's on you. Okay, my my end is working just fine. I have touched nothing. Well, maybe it's there's something you should touch to fix whatever it is. I know it's your end because I get green ring on my Discord server and you didn't. Well, I the same on my end. I get green ring for me and not for you. So I'm gonna blame the one up. that had trouble with their computer already, so... I don't uh, have yeah. problems with my computer, it's just, it's... Any computer would have trouble with OBS, aside from the very largest of rigs, because it's, it's a very hefty program. Don't size shame the program, Riggins. It's, it's, it's too big. My computer can't handle it. It's too strong. It requires more power. 
Oh, whoop, watch out. Ah, oh, crap, it right. I did see Coco play this boss, so I remember the most part. I do, I do really love this, that there's really, um, there's the kind of boss that is actually in the little puzzle scene and everything, but then there's also this kind of boss that is just, like, uh, a bit more like a Super Paper Mario kind of platformy situation. No. Uh, uh, uh. oh. No, not the goo. The goo. Not the goo. Mm. You. You. Why? No, nope. come back, come back. No. Okay. Oh, wow. The, uh, the range on the hammer is a lot wider than I would have expected. I was able to get that guy when I was... should not have been able to. Damn it. No, no. Let me get the heart. Oh my god, coming off of, like, the original Paper Mario, they give you so much time to pick stuff up in this one. That original N64 game, it was, like, instant. Like, the coins were just gone. Yeah. Nope. No, don't do that. No, don't do that. Hit him in the eye. Rawr, rawr, rawr. Hit him in the eye. I'm trying. There it is. You gotta wait for him to rah, rah, chill out. Kick him in the knee. Rah, rah, rass. Kick him in the other knee. <laughs> Classic. Oh, boy. Uh, I, I've been reading it. That vaguely reminds me of the, the firecracker, firecracker, shish, boom, ba. Bugs Bunny, Bugs Bunny, rah, rah, rah. Uh, uh -huh. I've been reading the Mel Blanc autobiography. Oh, boy. Uh, I've gotten to the point where he talks about some of his... Uh, let's say less uh, uh, tolerant characters and it, uh, the thing is he's talking yeah. about characters he voiced from the 40s through the 60s and yeah. he talked and it was written in the 80s so um, oh boy yeah he has a whole diatribe about how he feels that people should not have been angry about Speedy Gonzales because that's a classic comedy device it's stereotypes like yikes, Mel. I mean, at the time it was, but that doesn't excuse it. It's just lazy, well, it's right? the thing that messes me up is like he's talking about how there was a fervor because he's specifically talking about the Frito Bandito, which was, as he admits, was just Speedy Gonzalez's voice, but used for the Frito Lay mascot, and a lot of yeah. people in the '60s got really upset about that because it was just a pretty gross stereotype, and he just wax poetic about how like in the 40s we would have jewish stereotypes nobody cared or italian stereotypes and it's like that's not that's not the same thing mel mm. come on i got uh uh hoopla to finally work on my tablet today hoopla hoopla and i used it to read some comics and they happen oh. to have the flaming carrot Oh, so what do you and, what do you think? What how is it? Um, it's very of its time. Oh boy, not which was like necessarily offensive. Just that was what like the mid to late nineties, like late eighties, early to mid nineties. Okay, and like it's that kind of like first of all, you, have you seen the flaming carrot? Uh, yes. I've seen, I've seen images of him. I've never seen even a full page of his comic. So you know he's got duck feet, right? Yeah, what's that about? Um, the flaming carrot is a normal guy. Mm -hmm. The carrot thing is a mask. Okay. And those are the flippers. F flippers? Flippers. Why? He wears flippers. 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 It's that kind of a comic, like, I... the kind where normally you'd get maybe three or four pages of parody out of something, right. maybe one comic, and then you're kind of like, okay, if the premises weren't then, you can stop now. Yeah, anytime. And, yeah, and it just keeps going, and you're just like, okay, okay. It's an omnibus. It's got volume one of an omnibus of Flaming Carrots comics. 
Mm -hmm. So if you want to check it out, it's on Hoopla for free. You just need a library card. That's pretty good. Mario to tit! <laughs> Fucking Listen, love that little toad. It's, it's a life on the sea will do strange things to a toad. Tit! Oh my god, it's so slow. Hold on, I can... Press uh, ZR. Yeah. It helps a little anyway. bit. I'm, I... I, I know you can upgrade it later, but it's like, oof. It's, it's so uh, sluggish. I didn't bother upgrading it. Honestly, it makes you feel the weight. Oh, it goes way faster. It just, like, zips right across. No problem. I didn't bother. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, it, it's just, like, the parody kind of thing. Like, Martians invade, and they have a ray gun that will make your feet fall off, or hmm. things like that. And you're like... Okay, like, 90s comic parodies mm -hmm. were, like, there was a period where anything would get published. It was either really, really good or really, really not. Mm. And yeah. I feel like this is on the line where, and I always give, like, a comic like this a few tries before I give up. Right. But, like, because, like, they do get better with time as some go on. But this one is just not... Yeah, selling it. that's... Uh, a lot of people really underestimate how difficult parody is. Because if you do it, like, when you see it done right, it's like, yeah, it's great. But when it's done wrong, and the majority of parodies are, oh, it's unbearable. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Did you ever see when Linkara reviewed Mighty Mightily Murdered Power Ringers? No. I was thinking he did a review of that one like parody of Superman where like Ted Turner is his dad. Uh no, it's worse than that. Oh boy. Yeah. When I say it's bad, I'm talking like it's borderline unwatchable. Or unreadable. Right. Um. Give me just a second. Yeah. I'm having to step away from our stream for just a moment. Uh, yeah. Actually, in fact, I should probably take a break real quick. So, we will both be right back in just a moment, folks.
I have returned. Oh god. Oh no. It's back. I returned from the other side. It's not good. Traitor! Do you want to return? Uh, 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 not fish! No! Ow! Oh. oh no! God. Right, uh, Did you just say, oh god, fish, no? No? Yes. Oh lord, Iggy. So, Andrew, there are Iggy. certain, certain phrases that I feel kind of make people, uh, turn people kind of into the pull string doll kind of thing, you know? that Those different phrases makes you talk, you know? I think uh, I know one of those phrases for you, which is uh, centaur anatomy. What do you think? Iggy, goddammit. You told me. You told me to bring this up. You brought this got... evil. So centaurs, like, the more you think about them, don't make sense. And before I get on that, I just want to say, like, I just realized there's a super simple experiment you can do to explain to flat earthers that the earth is not fucking flat. Yeah. Sunsets. Yeah, well, they're not gonna believe that. Plus, I mean, God. You can take them to the beach and let them watch the sunset over the horizon, which cannot happen on a flat earth. It's impossible. Well, you could also... It physically cannot happen You could on also a just show them a time-lapse of the night sky. If you watch those hyperlapse time-lapses, they'll, like, they're very clearly... Like, you can see the curvature of the Earth as it goes. You might not be able to see it at regular speed, but at a higher speed, it's very obvious that the Earth is rotating well, under the, the sky. Well, then the video's edited and doctored and faked. No. But anyway, centaurs. Centaurs. And a, keep it keep it clinical. Uh, We'll say that, like, PG-13, at least. How do their spines work? How do, yeah, where the like where the the human body meets the horse body, it's like it would have to expand and like bend at a practically ninety degree angle. It, it, and their digestive tract. I don't do they know. have where are their important organs is? And I figured it out. It, the only way it works. And don't even get me started on Nukalavi. Those are even worse. On what? Those are worse. On what? Naka Levy. I'm not. Imagine a, a white. Imagine a horse. Okay. With a horse's head in the correct place, so like a normal horse. Mm -hmm. But then growing out the middle of its back is the torso of a human. With arms that reach the ground. Oh. And you've peeled the skin off the entire thing. Oh, so no. it's just muscle and long white hair on the human head. Oh, I hate it. That's an Irish folk monster, the Nuckleby. Hmm. Um, what am I supposed to do here? There's, I can't go out into the sea because there's fog. They were uh... talking about Captain Teod. Hmm. You don't have him yet. You have oh. to go back. You don't get Captain Teod with uh, Baba. Really? Okay. So, wait. Where do I go then? You have to go do the desert stuff first. Desert. Yeah. The desert. Where? You remember how your folded Oregon Olivia is under a boulder? You have to go rescue her. Oh. Uh, Bob Bomb does not have a fuse yet, though. Is it gonna be out there? Go to the boulder. Go to the boulder. Okay, and... Wait, what was the quickest way back to the boulder? Would that be through one of the warp pipes? Yeah, the warp pipe to the, uh, thing, and then catch the boat. To the... Yes, to Shogun Studios. Right, right, right. That's warp pipe number two. It, it, yeah... Down we go. Can't see it, but I'm waving a lighter for you. Oh. Yeah, light encore uh, for your brilliance. Yes, yes, mmm, yes. What? 
Arguably, you could have also taken the uh, gondola. Well, I'm thing. gonna, I'm taking it over but, here and then going on to it. No, I mean, like you could have taken the boat, the like cable car thing. Ah, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I suppose. I it suppose. Is. I did not see much of the desert, so this this is one of the ones that's still pretty pretty fresh to me. The desert one really pissed me off at one point. Yeah, is it? Hold on. Uh, oh, what's a way to say? It? Uh, is it the lamp? That was fine. That was okay. It was like I searched the entire desert looking for the professor mm. because I was led to believe that that's all I had to do next. Right. And so I got really annoyed and was like, well, clearly that's not working. I went to the top of all four towers, everything. Mm -hmm. I went to the, the sun pedestal, nothing. Mm -hmm. So I went back to the hotel and talked to the guy working the desk and he gave me an incense calm. And then I was able to continue. I was so fucking li like, why wouldn't he was the last person I talked to before I went out into the desert looking for the guy? Why wouldn't you just give me the thing then? Yeah. Oh uh, wait, okay, I know, I know what's going on here. I did see this particular cutscene before. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. Here we go, folks. His, his fuse got knocked loose. That's why he's been fuseless this whole time. That's right! You can rewind the footage, watch it from the beginning, not a fuse once. There he goes. Yeah. I, I love the Mario thing of having characters with big bulbous bodies and just the little, little feats with no legs. Little dinner loaf feet. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Uh huh. There it is. There's the fuse. And, and the. Oh, wait. Where's the kaboom? Wait There's for supposed it. to be an earth shattering kaboom. Here we go. Where is my C46 do it. space modulator? Bob, no! The kaboom! No! <sighs> Where's the kaboom? The only way to get rid of a cabbage. By blowing up a cabbage head. Hey, I'm here all week. Bob isn't, though. In the arms nope. of an angel. Oh, Bob Winkle! Wake up. Um, Wake up! In case you're wondering, yeah, Bob is dead. That's it. That's it for Bob. No, no, no like, Bob is dead. Rest, rest in pasta, little man. Mamma mia. Rest in gunpowder. Here we go again. My, my. How could I resist you? Mamma mia. Oh, Olivia. I missed you? Question mark? <laughs> <laughs> Question mark. She's okay. Honestly, some of the things that happen later make her a lot more endearing to me. Um, no. Honestly, I don't even necessarily have a problem with her character. It's just the fact that they made her the tutorial character. And I, th I feel like I'm repeating myself, but... Like, <coughs> no, she, I don't like her. She, I still don't like her. She can be funny. I don't like her. Hey, fat boy, what's up? What's happening? Uh... There you don't is. have to fucking insult me. It was that no, this 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 little tubby fella. Well mole. Why do you keep insulting? Now Listen. I'm a mole. God damn. Montgomery? 
Montgomery Mole right over here. Now you're comparing me to a little, like, rodent. What the hell, Iggy? Hey, moles are great. All right. You invite me on your show, you insult me. And I don't know how Adam Cole felt when he was on the Pat McAfee show. Jesus Christ. What happened there? Oh, it's, uh, like, it's very rare that you're, like, you hear a story and you're like, is this a work or a shoot? Oh boy. But it is very, uh, unclear on this one. He had a, like, if it was a work, it was well done. It looks like a shoot. He lost his mind. Oh boy. And started screaming, fuck you this, fuck you that. Uh, at the guy hosting the show, because the guy just kept intentionally, like, pissing him off. And he finally just stormed out in the middle of the fucking interview. I mean, yeah, at a certain point, you gotta, like, stand up for yourself. I mean, he screamed at him and just left. Oof. Um... Let me see if I can find the story. Oh, oh, totally. Because, um, like, it's fucking nuts. Nuts. Uh, Adam that. Cole. Uh, yeah. So. The Monty Moles. Let me see. The Monty Moles. Monty Mole. After Spike, Monty Moles. My favorite Mario character. I just I love little fat round guys like this, you know. In the in Super Mario Party, they're just walking around slapping their gut the whole time. It's hilarious. I love them. Uh, I'm gonna play the video and then tell you what's being said. Ooh, so give me okay. A second. Here we go. Play by play. Hello. Hello. How can I help? He's talking about being the first ever NXT double champion. Mm hmm. Pat McAfee is comparing him to Shawn Michaels. Okay. Says you're nowhere near what Shawn Michaels was. Ooh. skip ahead a little bit to the meltdown because it is fuck you Pat I'm sick of your shit I come all the way down here taking time away from my family to do your show mm -hmm. to do your stupid fucking show a co-host comes up and tries to calm him down he too late. pushes the guy across the set and is like don't fucking touch me and he yells fuck you several more times and walks off oof and, like, because Pat McAfee called him short. Like, basically saying, you know, that he claimed, oh, you only got the success you have because of Undisputed Era. You mm. wouldn't have gotten anywhere without them. And he's like, uh... Fuck you! Uh... Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Meltdowns like that, it's always like a toss-up, whether it's like entertaining or just like, ugh, I'm, I'm worried for them. They Are they and good? So, like, and like your initial reaction is, ah, oh, it's a work. It's always a work. Like, yeah. not real. It's a work. But you're not entirely convinced yeah. Yeah, you know, like it could be a uh, shoot, like hmm. flashy hammer. Uh yeah, let's switch those out. And then oop, oh, I actually should get rid of the busted up one. Get out of here. There we go.
Is it? Rock. Hello. Um, Tucker Carlson is upset that Drudge is firmly a man of the progressive left now. His site is no longer distinguishable from woke websites. Mm -hmm. Like, he will talk about anything other than the sexual assault harassments against him, huh? Yep. Um... It's just... Tucker Carlson is another one of those guys. Another... Another dude who tried to make it in, in Hollywood as, like, a writer and then failed. And so he went to the next best thing, which is shilling for the right wing. And it's it's not hard, and it is certainly profitable. But, uh, man, you have to be pretty soulless to do that. Yeah, you know, he got, like, he used to wear a bow tie every day. Yeah, that was and his then, brand. Uh, like, that was his thing. He was the bow tie guy. And then he got embarrassed so hard on it, he never wore one again. Yeah. Like, he That's got... the thing, is if you do something like that, you have to recognize that it is silly and kind of goofy, and you have to own that. If you're not able to, then, like, what's the point of you wearing it to begin with? You should recognize that not everybody is going to think it's a good idea and are going to make fun of you for it. But it has to, like, it has to matter enough to you to, like, keep it. Yep. Friggin' Geraldo yeah. looks like a fool with his giant mustache, but he's kept that thing. Yeah. <sighs> Somebody put fucking pop tarts on a grill. Why? I mean, somebody said just warm them in your armpits like a normal person. No, you eat them frozen. What are you, a psychopath? Frozen pop tarts are pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Oh god, he's a ghost. Um, yeah, especially, specifically, like, the chocolate ones. They have this one, uh, what was it? We got, uh, chocolatey churro. So it's, like, cinnamon on the outside and chocolate filling. Those frozen? Delicious. Derrico has a new shirt. Oh? Demo God. 1849. <laughs> oh. Like a Bible verse. Yeah. Somebody said, that's cool and all, but when can we get Dark Order masks? Right? Someone said, at your, someone said, at your local PDS shop. Oof. Because <laughs> they're creepy, or they're spooky perverts. Yup. <laughs> uh, what was it? The Goomba what mask? What did you think of that said? Eddie Kingston promo, though? Oh, man. that I mean, the match and everything, but, like, wow, that was the rawest promo they've had. Period. Like, he got he got real with it. Like, that's the thing, is, like, there's not a lot you can call out Cody for, but, like, if you're gonna call out his privilege, man, that's, that's, that's some real, real business. You gotta hit him hard with that one if you're gonna go for it. Mm -hmm. So, um... Here's a headline? Okay. Wait, wait, uh, 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 before I read it out loud, are we past the restriction of time and age? Uh, not yet. About, a, mm, the, probably after I'll the next it, break, I, I will certainly let you know. I'll send it on Twitter then. Okay. Oh. Oh, God. Uh... I will. I, I. I'll read the response that I sent you in reply to mm. the tweet, which is everything I know about Gwyneth Paltrow. I know against my will. <laughs> True. Yeah, I'm never searching for Gwyneth Paltrow info, but it it finds its way into my brain somehow. <laughs> oh my god. God, that one's so terrible. I'm so mad. Oh no. Uh, 
somebody said, is there a way for Gwyneth to take a vow of silence for a bit? And uh, Sarah Dyer said, I just cringed really hard. I mean, the mental image. <sighs> Let me grab the pulley tab. Yeah, nice. But yes, uh, going back to Hoopla, if you have a library card... Mm -hmm. I think... No, I don't think I do, but I could get one. You can download Hoopla and Canopy, spelled with a K. Mm -hmm. And you can get books, comic books, audiobooks, TV shows, movies, and other stuff through Hoopla. Ten borrows a month. And if you go through Canopy, you can get uh, TV shows and movies. Uh, I tried watching one yesterday that was about uh, misogyny and wrestling. I'm like, oh, this will be interesting. Mm -hmm. And like all of the information in it was 20 years out of date. And I was like, oh, never mind. Yeah, that's like um, recently there was kind of a controversy around this video made by someone who used to be kind of uh, important in the My Little Pony community, but she stepped away from the community like five years ago at least. So a lot of her info wasn't super up to date, but she does point that out and stuff. Um, the larger controversy is she uh, included footage of art at a convention and did not credit the artist or get their permission beforehand which is yeah pretty pretty crappy yeah so one of the things that upset me about the documentary was wait it was clearly made 20 years ago as well so like, but they didn't include dates or anything okay with the documentary you gotta you gotta well like when I clicked on it, it just said, oh, it's about misogyny and wrestling. And the picture made it look fairly recent. Okay. It was a very high-def, high-quality photo. Sure. And then I started watching, and, like, immediately it was dated by the film quality. It was dated by the, uh, fucking wrestlers. Um, it was very obviously, like, an old documentary, I was just like, could you please make that more obvious in the future, like? Yeah, I believe there's been, like, a, a mini-series about, if not specifically that, but uh, a lot of different problematic things in wrestling. Yeah, um, Dark Side of the Ring. That's the one, yep. Yeah, that's where they talked about how the harness that was supposed to lower Owen Hart to the ring only was weighted for six pounds. Yeesh. Yeah. Because <laughs> it was cheaper and quicker. Um, I just... <clears throat> there's yeah. no way to... <clears throat> there's no way to describe that that doesn't make it sound intentional. Right. Uh, um... I... It, which one do I So do? what do you think of the uh, football team out of Washington's new name? Uh, oh, I have. I heard that they were changing it, but I haven't heard the new name. What What did they go with? The Washington football team. What, really? Mm-hmm. Um. Hmm. Okay. That's... What? <laughs> They were like, if we can't be racist, we're not being anything. Well, yeah. Why don't you just disband, guys? Like, why? What's the problem? Honestly, I'd say abolish all, uh, all professional sports in general because they are generally pretty evil and a huge burden on their the cities that they're being done in. What do you think of the new NHL team for Seattle? I have not heard of this one either. What? What's this one? The Kraken. Mm. And like, some chud was like, "Oh, 
this is officially the worst, or move over Toronto Raptors, there's an official new worst name in pro sports. What, really? And somebody was like, there are literal teams that are racist names. But, okay. Yeah, or if we're gonna go another way, uh, like, ducks, maple leaves, like, there are so many dumber names in pro sports. And the worst was, like, the one I grew up with was the baseball team out of Atlanta. Uh, oh boy. I don't actually know what they're oh, called. Oh, you know it. Do I? Oh, uh, well, it's not great. Begins with a B, rhymes with graves. It's not great, but it's better than uh, what Cleveland was doing. Although they they, they, both... they retired that, at least. You know, good, good. The Atlanta uh, team has decade. not, They're... and they still do the tomahawk chant. Ugh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, let's see if there's anything interesting happening on SmackDown. What's uh, happening on SmackDown? Good. Nothing fun, Oof. I bet. Ooh. I almost want to tune in tomorrow and check it out just to see the crappy new digital roof they put on the building. Oh yeah, you were telling me about that. Has any footage come out about it yet? Uh, tonight would be the first night. Um, oh boy, I can't wait to see wrestling Twitter uh, posting clips of that. Um, I'm driving a boot. This is just, this is just heckin' delightful. Have you ever listened to Ramstein? Uh, yeah. Did you ever hear their song, um, hold on. Uh, Seaman? Mm. Which is like, sailor, like that kind of Yes, singer. like a man of the sea. Oh, -E they just- they, That was a clever little reference to the old games. They said- they said the sun might be angry. That old, yeah. that classic angry sun, which always, I, I never played that level. I just use the P-Wing and fly over the whole situation. Uh, they have, in the song Simon, uh -huh. the first line is, Come in my boot, which is get in my boat. Yeah. But it's spelled boot. Yeah, like it, you, you, you boot, or das boot. The, the classic film. Boot to the head. Nah, nah. Have I ever played you boot to the head? Oh, I've definitely heard it. Bo both versions. There's the um, there's the will reading uh, version, and there is the uh, dojo version. And there's a song. Yes, the song is usually accompanied with the uh, dojo version. I'm pretty sure. Yes, I have the album. Yeah. Who actually? On vinyl. Nice. I'm so hipster, I have the vinyl of that. Okay, who actually did that? Because I mostly know it from... Frantics. I mostly know it from the, the Dr. Demento, uh, like, anniversary CDs. It's a group called the Frantics out of Canada. Yep. I, I'm pretty sure they're also the group that did the... the uh... the I'm Attacking the Darkness D&D &D sketch. If I'm not mistaken. Uh... I don't know, but I do know that that was posted a lot on 8BitTheater.com. Yeah, they often they would remove the, the intro and outro bit that uh, explained it, because the whole thing was supposed to be making fun of, like, Midwest moms who were terrified that their kids were being Satanists, when in reality they're just being fantasy dorks. Uh, that one is not the Frantics. It's not? Okay. It's the dead, the dead alewives. Mmm, okay. According to knowyourmeme.com. Right. Ah, ah, scorpion! It was a toad. Uh, the I'm not itself. poisonous, I'm venomous! Do you know the difference between poisonous and venomous, Andrew? Yes. If you bite it and it kills you, it's poisonous. Mm -hmm. If it bites you and it kills you, it's venomous. Correct. But, what if it bites me and it kills it? That means you're poisonous. 
I was hoping you'd get that one. Glad you saw the setup and went for it. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait. Shoot, I only get one. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, right. I figured it out. Uh. Hammer. I'm always, like, on the fence about whether or not I like desert sections in games. Because on one hand, the concept seems kind of boring. But on the other hand, I always find myself enjoying them. So, uh. This one's good. Oh, yeah. I also just love the like little touch that it's you know sandpaper. It's cute. It's very cute. <coughs> oh my god, this thing is awesome. What you got? A chromatophore cell pigment thing. Oh, this is an animal that looks like a fucking show. Hmm. Uh, uh, change color, the animal distorts the seculous swarm or size of the contraction. Oh no. I sent it on Twitter. Okay. Let me check that real quick. Uh, what? Oh. Open. Open, you fool. It's like a little squid. Ooh, weird. Oh. It's like a bunch of little. That's bizarre. I am going to I'm it. going to actually retweet that, so anyone who's interested in what we're talking about, go check out my Twitter, which you can see right there, at IggyDKid, or you can just go uh, down below on the browser version and click on the Twitter feed I have down there. It'll take you right over there. Or actually, if you just scroll down and look, you should see it now. It should have updated as I retweeted that. It looks like slowly simmering soup. Mm, yeah. I went with the PG thing instead of what first came to mind. Listen. Oh wow, these boos hit hard. What did you say? These boos hit hard. Oh, that's not what I heard. Okay. Okay. I heard something dirty. I'm sure you did. The darkest hour only has 60 minutes. Yeah, but the darkest day can have longer. Yeah. We're in the darkest year. Making this yep. so far the darkest decade. Yeah, everybody's just talking about uh, skipping right over to Christmas. Partly because of the whole, oh, Christmas in July, haha. Business. Burger King did that. Yeah, Burger King did that. Um, Starbucks, I think, is doing that. Uh, I. So here's the thing. I actually, for the first time since I was 10, am looking forward to Christmas this year. Just really? because it's, yeah, like, I don't really like Christmas, but I'm actually like, I could really use some Christmas right now. Mm -hmm. Um, that said, I don't want it to be corporate. Like, I don't want the corporate side of it to come in. Yeah, please, I'm, no. I want decorations and all that, and that's, you know... And I don't necessarily want Christmas. I just want, like, holiday decorations. Oh, totally. I, yeah. I want, you know, holiday drinks. I want holiday food. Ooh, I yeah. I'm looking for it. I'm going to make some of those uh, some of those holiday drinks from the, the recent Good Eats special. Or rather, the most recent. It, it, I think it's from, like, a year or two ago. I'm this close to going to the store and buying the ingredients necessary to make uh, sausage balls. Sausage balls. Yes. Hmm. It's uh make some bisquick breakfast sausage and cheddar. That oh. you, and the only way to mix it is by hand. Otherwise the consistency is not correct. So it's and like so a sausage like, like a sausage fritter. Kind of, but you bake them. And they're about oh, okay. the size of like a half a walnut. Oh, so uh, small. Yeah. I was imagining like the size of a, like a scotch egg. No. Too like much. if you took the yolk from a hard boiled egg, it's about that big. Okay. Oh damn, I need to if boil that. some eggs. I used to do yeah. it all the time because it's just a quick snack. Um, but I don't like I eggs, forget so. to it. <laughs> but it's literally just shredded cheddar, 
sausage is quick. Hmm. And you mix it by hand until it is a single consistency and nice and smooth. And then, uh... Just like a shredded cheddar? Yeah. Okay. And that's it. Like, oh, not Butch Hardman. Oh, no, Butch Hardman's been been off the deep end for quite a while now, unfortunately. Well, there's a list of, like, allegations against him. Didn't pay an artist the $1,400 he owes for animation. Mm -hmm. uh, ghosted the artist when he wanted to know what was going on with the project. Took uh, over 200000 in Kickstarter money to make a streaming service that he stopped updating people on. Yeah, he stopped updating uh, people on and he did not disclose in the Kickstarter anywhere that it was going to be a very heavily uh, Christian streaming service. He just said it was going to be kid-friendly, but he, he did not mention the the religious part of it, which is uh, pretty, a, pretty crappy. While not, while not showing results for the service, wrote a book, continued making YouTube comments, and run, ran multiple events and seminars. Mm -hmm. Does vision, vision coaching, where he claims he can help you make your own projects come true for 2000 bucks in a phone call. Ooh. Runs a seminar that claims it can cure autism and that it also cured life-threatening illnesses. No. Includes parents who speak out or who speak about how awful it was that their boys had autism and make autistic people look like monsters. Of course. Through a tantrum saying you're not allowed to critique him if you have not achieved what he has. Made a really disrespectful comment about the suicide of a voice actress who worked for him. Constantly yes. brags about yeah. how amazing he is, claiming he created your childhood. Uh, I mean, and... he's not necessarily wrong on that front, but it's like he can he can take a step. Like, there's a right way to say that, and there's a wrong way. And for uh, for with that, it's like that's very braggadocious. Whereas if you look at Rob Paulson, the way he puts it is like. Check it out. Your childhood is a gross old forty-year-old dude, and it's like, there we go. There, there's the real, the, there's the joke. Be, uh, be a little self-deprecating. It's a humble brag, but at least it's like one that isn't annoying. Yeah. Um. God damn it, Butch Hartman. I actually liked you, dude. Oh no, he's been going off. The, the, like that Kickstarter was like a, a year or two ago, and he's honestly been pretty crappy uh for quite a while and he also he made like um i don't know he's he's just gotten like incredibly religious he wants to be basically a televangelist uh but animated um there was this one thing recently where he like he's been taking commissions i guess and he was doing like one of his own characters from danny phantom and it's it's really bad like he it was completely off model it looks like he just slapped it out in like a few minutes rather than taking the time to I don't know earn the money that he's getting for it which is probably a lot considering I'm sure he's he's requesting a pretty hefty uh, amount for for his his uh uh wares uh, I I'm disappointed I'm not shocked because if you actually go back, uh, the person who he's the most close to in the animation industry, do you know? No, because I don't follow behind the scenes stuff on the animation industry. It's, uh, he's actually very good friends. He came up with Seth MacFarlane. They both worked on Johnny Bravo together, so. Yeah. It makes a lot more sense now. Yeah, that's the pendulum swung the other way. Like, Seth MacFarlane is irritating, to say the least. But at least he's not like that. He's yeah, like, he's problematic, but like he's problematic in his work. He doesn't yeah, freaking scam people. Well, and. Like, a lot of what you would point to and say, well, this is problematic that he does, is stuff he has no control over anymore. Sure. Mainly Family Guy. Yeah, at, at, this Family point, Guy. He, at this point, at this point, he's mostly just, just a performer. American Dad. Yeah, he yeah. focuses on American Dad, 
Um, which does make... Uh, I mean, okay. Grain of Salt I have not watched in years, but when I used to watch American Dad back in, like, high school, it did make some decent points about politics and American government. Yeah, and they've got Sword and Bowie writing for them now, so... Oh, I didn't know about that. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm glad he uh, found more work. Well, he did that before Crack shut the oh, video website. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, he had been working for them. He and Michael Swain had actually left before all that. Right. I think Teresa Lee also had already left. The backlog oh. of videos they made was so great that it was, you know, still coming out that they were still in the videos because it was that big a backlog. Wow. Um, and so people were, like, worried about them at the time, and they had to go on Twitter and say, uh, thank you all for the concern, but I've already left Cracked months ago, the backlog. Uh, so people who actually got jobless at the time were Maggie Mae Fish, mm -hmm. um, Tom Ryman, sure. um, a lot of the writers, um, Daniel O'Brien, who went to work for last week tonight with John Oliver. Yes, which is doing pretty well from everything I've yeah. seen. Um, he got to, it was a pretty adorable moment um, when they they won an, uh, not an Oscar, uh, an Emmy for last week tonight. Uh, Daniel was one of the people who went on stage to accept it. And a lot of his former cracked peers like tweeted like, oh my God, it's Daniel. He's on stage at the Emmys. Yeah. Um, so, so happy nice. for him. He, he, I think Daniel was probably my favorite writer out of all of them. Oh, he was definitely my per favorite performer. Mm, yeah. He w that's the thing is he was By very, he was very shy, but like he, when he was performing, you could hardly tell. He, he, yeah. he was very good about, um, not necessarily hiding it, but working with it. Yeah. Uh... Crap, I don't have just... any confetti. He was, he was very good. He was one of my favorites. Um... How do you not have confetti? It's been a desert! I've been using it! On, on, on holes. There's so much of it, though! Listen. Yeah, he's the bug. Um, God, there's so much of it. <laughs> like, I gotta go. I gotta go to the city. You know what the hardest toad for me was? Because it took me like way too long to figure out. Which one? The lizard toad on the western wall of the area you're in now. Oh yeah, I kind of got that one by accident because I was just fiddling around and accidentally fell. Yeah. But, um... Or can the cactus give confetti? Cactus? No. No confetti on cactus. Um, yeah. Whatever we were talking about. The thing. Mm -hmm. The thing and the stuff. Oh my god, Olivia, yeah, we'll memory. follow the friggin' t streamer. I don't have a strong memory, so I very easily forget things. Mm hmm. So. They brought JBL on to talk about the bar fight. That's awful. Mm hmm. Did I tell you that uh, one of the big uh, gimmicks WWE had this week was Seth Rollins throwing up after the Eye for an Eye match? <laughs> it's so funny. It's so good. You guys are really knocking it out of the park, aren't you? Because, you know, he took out a guy's eyes and, you know. Uh... Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very funny, I love it. This is so good, guys. Guys, you gotta watch- Dude, have you heard of this? WWE is so good. 
and what what are they even doing over there like how can they be be demanding such such ridiculous things of even the world at large to fit into the paradigm that they need for their performances and they're doing crap like this um they so Washington State Department of Agriculture talking about those seeds yeah Somebody tweeted in reply, China added again spreading diseases. Now they know how effective it is. We will see a lot more of these attempts. No, no, you racist. And like, I'm looking at the picture, and they are very, like, I, I can see the, like, actual fucking seeds now. Mm -hmm. And they look like, like, orange or lemon. They look like citrus seeds. Oh, okay. Probably, like, a, they look probably a, a, a variant of citrus that is Chinese. I mean, probably. If I had and somebody to guess... said, what am I gonna get? Lemon AIDS? No, no. You do you think you're so clever with that pun? Ugh, it hurts. You were brainwashed into thinking your fave aunt... Oh wow. Oh no. I thought that was going to be a different... That one took a sharp turn at the end. I can't repeat that one on stream. Oh, no. <laughs> that bad? That one sharply turned... Not bad, just... It's funny. It's just... It's sharp turn. It's just not, so not appropriate for you. It is not PG-13. Fair enough. Well... You should maybe have a chance for it in a little bit. I'm, I'm going to take a break at about 10 here, and then we will have, I believe, an hour or so of uh, unrestricted after hours, after dark. It's already after dark. It's been dark all day. Shh, 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 shh. Baby bear, don't, don't, don't worry. The darkness will only, only last so long. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Ah, uh, darkness imprisoning me. Here to talk with you again. No. Uh, uh, what are these old li I feel like that's probably going to be a thing once I find... I think I might nice take up beekeeping. Hmm. Man, I, I remember... <laughs> I remember there was a Goosebumps <laughs> book. Um, What was it? It's a Why I'm Afraid of Bees. And the whole thing is that he, like, mind swaps with a bee and becomes one for a while. And I think I remember the cover of that. Is it, like, a brown and yellow bee with a kid's face? Yeah. Um, the thing is, it's it's better than the uh, other body swap one. Ah, damn it. I went one shy on that. Oops. Um, it's better than the yeah. other body swap one because it uses science and not really bad Romani uh, stereotypes like the chicken one, but uh, the thing I remember is that his his neighbor is like, I'm a beekeeper, but I my tree, my bees trust me so much, I don't even wear gloves. They're, they'll never sting me. And his whole thing is like, I'm gonna show him what's up. If he thinks, he thinks bees aren't gonna hurt him, this bee's gonna hurt him. And then he, uh, he forgets. There's another one titled, Why I'm Afraid of Toys. Oh no. That's probably one of the more recent series of it. Uh, hold on. There's like a whole other series. Okay. So oh god, these boos are parody. so annoying. It seems to be a parody title. Mm, okay. Because it's photoshopped Chucky onto the cover. Wow. <laughs> Here's my question. Goosebumps. Good or bad? Books, good. Old 90s TV show, hit or miss. Fair anything, enough. anything past the 90s, stop. Just don't. Uh, I liked some of the Goosebumps nope. 2000s were okay. They weren't, they weren't great. I will say they're not nearly as good as the other ones, but the, the Invasion of the Body Squeezers uh, duology was actually pretty, pretty scary. 
Supreme Court rejects uh, Nevada Church's challenge to restrictions on service attendance. In a five to four vote, the Supreme Court rejected a Nevada Church's challenge to attendance limits at religious services. They argued that the state discriminated against houses of worship and treated casinos, restaurants, and amusement parks more favorably. Well, I say uh, my point is uh, they shouldn't be open either. Maybe, um, maybe restaurants that have a drive-through slash delivery, and maybe um, the grocery stores, and that's about it. That's pretty much the only places that should be open, and they should be heavily restricted. Get back here, you freaking ghost! Get up. yeah. Um, what? What? There is apparently unused sprites of Luigi flipping the bird. Oh no, from this in game? In Super Mario World. Super Mario World? Yeah, oh yeah, he's straight up flipping the bird. That's inappropriate. I thought this was a children's game. The little children. What's this? <laughs> the bird? In not in I don't want profanity in my game. Is, prof is, is, is visual profanity. Oh. Look, I sent the picture on uh, Twitter. If you look at the third to last row, the, like, last picture. Or second to last picture. Right, right, right. Just, uh, I'm dealing with this paper macho boo situation. Oh, yeah, those suck. I gotta say, man, the paper macho, super clever name for these guys. Uh, it's alright. I've heard worse. Whoop. I feel like one thing I do enjoy about the uh, the latter Paper Mario games, like they they can be hit or miss. You know, Super Paper Mario is supposed to be pretty bad. Color Splash is, I'll say, divisive since you you like it. Um. I think it has the best aesthetic. Okay. I think it has the best uh, story, to be honest. Sure. Come at me, thousand year door stands. Yeah. Oh yeah, there have been people who have been saying that like this is way better than thousand year door, and uh, I, I agree. I think I agree. Yeah. I I think more than anything, like this really utilizes the paper theme so much better in pretty much every way. Like, they thought of every kind of form of paper that there is and used it appropriately. I think that if you treat them as simple RPGs only, and you don't think of them as paper RPG... Yeah, that was... I mean, that's why... That's why... The first one is fine. It's fun, but, like, you can certainly tell... Um, as we discussed, like, while playing it and stuff, uh, the, the paper gimmick was, like, a, a, just an aesthetic there. That's why it barely comes into play, aside from some, uh, gags and cutscenes, and it really wasn't until Thousand Year Door that they started to really lean into the paper aspect of it. Well, again, it was never made a paper game. It right. wasn't, it was only called that after... Uh, they realized they couldn't use the license for RPG, and so they had to change the name, and they were like, well, it looks like Paper Paper Mario. Yeah, which, I mean, it's still good. Like, it's it's fun. Um, but it's certainly, uh, it's, it's, I'd say, probably, like, middle of the road. It's not, it, compared to the other ones, it's not great, and it's not terrible. It's, it's, it's definitely the one that if you told me it was the only one that exists, I'd be like, yes, yeah, this is good. Sure. Yeah. Um, I think Thousand Year Door is good. I think I like this one better. Mm. Um, it's Man. got way better aesthetics. Sure. Um, I don't necessarily... Like, I do miss one aspect that Thousand Year Door had that this doesn't. Uh-huh. 
and that was the uh, people who you know you can run that over, right? Like with the car. And oh, you stuff. can. Okay. Shoot. Yeah, you yeah just I've been getting out. It. Okay, here we go then. You could also Pepper. run over enemies and kill them with it. Yep, and toads. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Bam. You just have to be going Get quick. Him. Oh, oh, okay, I can just run the pokies over. Got it. Oh, yeah. man, this is so much smoother. I was like, this yeah. is kind of tedious, but, whoa, with that, this is way better. Is that how I do these? I thought you were intentionally avoiding it. No, I just, I thought I had to get out and use my hammer. When all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Correct. Nail. Nail. You know, Dragon Ball Bridge? Oh, yeah. I think that's around where I stopped watching because the Frieza arc went on so, so long. And I know that's true to the show, but, like, yeesh. Yeah, at at a certain pretty... point, you, there's only so many jokes you can make about Frieza. You know what that show's final episode joke was? Did they finish they, it? The show's over, yeah. They got burned out on it, and they are not going back to it. They are tired of it. I don't blame that. They clear like, at a certain like, point, they be were becoming self-parody. Like, they were clearly aware that they pretty much had, like, three jokes that they were having to do for the fans. Yeah, they finished the Cell Saga. Hmm. They took a break, and they were going to come back and do the Boo Saga. And then they just got so sick and tired of it. You know that skull on that one cactus is a toad, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just getting the other stuff first here. Mm, the writers got tired of writing it. So the last official joke is actually a blooper that was cut and put into the end credits. Mm -hmm. And it's Alma talking to Trunks. And she's like, or Trunks is like, So mom, my dad, can you explain that? And she's like, oh, you know, it, yeah, he was a bad boy, and I was looking to piss off Yamcha, and I figured, in for a penny, in for a pounding, and boy, was I. Wow. <laughs> wow. That was the last official joke they had. Good work, guys. Good work. Um, With that, I'm going to take another quick break here, and we will be... Oh, wait, cutscene. Yep. Oh, Okay. I will be right back, folks. Uh, pause for safety here. All right. Do you want to be on mic or off? Uh, I'll mute myself. I'm hungry.
My knees. The pain. All right. We are back. So when I was in middle school. Yes. I had a coach, and I'm not making this up. My high school gym coach, or middle school gym coach, I'm sorry, was literally named Coach Payne. Oh, Lord. And not only that, he was also my mom's high school, or, yeah, high school gym coach. Oh, wow. So, it's one of those, like, legendary character names, like, Coach Payne. Mm. So, and he fucking lived up to that. Yeah, it sounds like it. Oh, dang it, I don't have that. Huh? Ah, oh, this circle. What's this one mean? Uh, this red element. Red element, I don't know. <laughs> My brain. So. One time, when I was a kid, I just, hold on, first of all, I just realized I was making watching this a lot harder on myself than it needed to be. Oh. I have two monitors, and instead of having my, uh, having the stream on one monitor, and, you know, Twitter and all that with all the news and everything on the other monitor, mm -hmm. I had the YouTube channel I was watching before the stream started on this one monitor and the stream on the other. So I'd have to uh, shrink down the stream to <laughs> pull up the news. Why did you do this to yourself? I don't know. Oh. Oh yeah, there's a lot more confetti here now that I know you can just run those guys over. Yeah. That's why I kept running out. I... Ram him. There he is. Hello, Toad. All right, We're moving. Here we go to the big city, the oasis. I need a, a bizarre, curious cat question to ask a friend of mine. I have created a character that is a, a Russian pretending to be an American, trying to give her money. Okay. Through Ludax. So, oh boy. I need a, a like one was depositing Bitcoin, but only on butts or faces. Oh boy. <laughs> so I need. Oh, uh, hold on, keep it, keep it PG thirteen still. Fine. Well, it was Bitcoin. I but you deposited it on someone's face. Ah yes, yes, yes. I'll I'll let you know. I I asked Coco to uh to message me when 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 the coast is clear to so to speak oh uh, uh, yeah it's just bitcoin there's nothing loot about bitcoin oh i don't know man those those bits those coins get me going i love Two what old bits i've only seen bit bits of uh these these shy, the sniffets in the city, but I, I love them so much. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, they're good. There is some body horror in this level more than usual. Mm, yeah, God, yeah, that uh, the um, the boss. Well, what you call it? The the penny arcade strip you sent me. Like that's so accurate. This game is like. Even though they're paper, it's like this is is shockingly like disturbing. Yeah, this is this is body horror for kids. Seriously, hold on, I gotta reset the Elgato. I was doing the search for signal business again. Mm. Come on, mm. come on, back on, back up. There we go. Oh, and I should actually equip those accessories I just got. Date, date. Uh, ooh, uh, mm, mm. I don't know which which alert do I keep on. Ah, uh, I'll keep the treasure on, I think. Ah, and I keep forgetting to use the membership card. Yeah, whatever. 
Um, in the club. I need a, I need a, a fun question to send my friend. Mm hmm. I, I don't have anything off the top of my head. Yeah, I'm thinking. Uh. Hmm. Uh, ba -ba. yeah. Gonna have to think on that one. Keep in mind for the character. Mm -hmm. Everything is a money scam. Right. Skewed towards the, you know, non PG 13 crowd. Right. Oh, mm. I'll send you a. Um Saving dun, dun, dun. Crush They sniff it I'll send on Discord what the first one was So you can get an idea yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah Oh that's that classic Hot and vase crushing action. This is what I come to Nintendo for. How's that good stuff? What are you talking about, little man? So, like, there you go for an example. Yeah, whoop. So, it's all money scams. In that kind of a thing. Hmm. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, oh, what is it? I'm trying to formulate something here. Um, I'm trying to. For I have an idea of how to formulate something that is still PG-13 but fits into that. Uh, Go for it. Ooh, ooh. I, I, it's it's half baked right now, but something to the tune of. Uh, I can give you my mother's fortune, but you must be able to pick it up with just your toes. <laughs> That's the one. Is that good? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I can work with that. I have many American dollars. <laughs> <laughs> My mother's fortune <laughs> to give to you, but only what you can pick up with toes in half hour. <laughs> <laughs> in half hour, that's good. It turns into a, like a double dare <laughs> challenge. You gotta pluralize hour, so in half hours. <laughs> in half hours. <laughs> I love the name that he has, by the way, like the name I've given him. Oh, what is it? Corn drippings. <laughs> Very American name, corn drippings. Yeah. It sounds like, oh, what's that? There was this meme going around. There's like a baseball game for the NES where, yeah, where they had uh, one of the writers who clearly did not know how American names worked had to come up with a full roster of American baseball player names. God, it's so good. See if you can find that because that, I, I feel like a reading of that would be some solid content here. Whoop. <laughs> I wonder if the what the music to this place is like. I remember listening to it, but uh can't listen to it right now. Gotta find a way. Gotta find a way to be able to, to listen to mute the music while also having you on here. Hmm. Here it is. 
Oh boy. Here we go. Sleeve McDykel. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Onsen Sweeney. Yeah. Th that's the best part about all of these is that they kind of I make like um verbal sense. <laughs> yeah. Like you can get where they kind of got like the patterns of American names. Yeah. Daryl Archideld. Anatole, Anatole Smorin. <laughs> Ray McSriff. Ray McSriff is pretty good. Glen Allen Mixon. Ooh. Mario McAlwain. Mm. Raul Chang Changerlane. Mm. Kevin Nagilney. Tony Smerrick. <laughs> Tony Smerrick. <laughs> Bobson Dugnut. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's a winner. That's a winner right there. Willie Dustus. Jerome Gride. Scott DeRove. Dowrove. Mm -hmm. Sean Furcotti. <laughs> Dean Wesry. Mm. Mike Truck. <laughs> Spell T R U K. Oh, good. Dwigget Rorchigal. <laughs> oh, no. Tim Sandale. Uh huh. Carl Dandleton. <laughs> Dandleton's really good. <laughs> Mike Cernandez. And Todd Gonzalez. Oh, goodness. I think Bobson Dugnut's the best. That's pretty good. Bobson Dugnut. Hmm. Bam. Oh, my God. I'm changing my Twitter name to Bobson Dugnut real quick. Hold on. Oh yeah, that's good. Oh boy. Do you remember the movie Pocahontas? Oh, very well. I watched that one a lot as a kid. Do you remember what she had to do in order to be able to speak English? Uh, you must li wait. What was it? Listen with your heart, you will understand. Yeah. She's like, I don't understand English. And then, like, here's a song. It's just like, oh. I mean. That's what was missing. It definitely that's has that, like, kind of twee, like, oh, it's, it's, it's Disney. And if you listen with your heart, you can do anything. But it's like, ah. Oh. I don't think you can just suddenly understand another language. Also, Especially why does she have to listen with her heart? How? What? How? Why come uh, he don't have to do that instead? Yeah. Also, it's kind of one of those things where, um, you know, God, I don't even know how to put it in words, but um, English is one of the most complicated languages in the world. Yeah, there's so many weird exceptions to pretty much every rule. Um, someone described English as, English is not a language. English goes around and beats up other languages and roots around in its pockets for lost or loose adverbs. Yeah, yeah, there's like, so, I mean, there's so many different words that are just rooted in other languages. And on one hand, it's like, you know, integration, globalization, it happens, but like, uh, maybe not like this. Yeah, no, we, we really do just beat up other languages and steal their vowels. We do indeed. Which makes it interesting that... No, I messed that up. We don't use any little, like, accent marks over letters. Yeah, that's that would help a lot, because there, even if you are a native English speaker, when you see a new word, there's like a good 50% chance that you're going to get it wrong. Yeah. Like, I was watching uh, uh, What Culture the other day, and the word was, I'm going to spell it, okay? Okay. You tell me the proper pronunciation. C-H-A-G-R-I-N. Chagrin. Iggy, Iggy, Iggy. If you had watched the video, you would know the proper pronunciation is Chagrin. N no. No, that's not correct. 
And this is the moment where I was like, British people are never allowed to be act superior when we say words weird. Because that is just completely wrong. British words also, like, trick you. There are so many, like, shibboleths in that language. Like, half of their, plate, like, location names make no sense phonetically. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. And, like, I will never, like, let them live down soccer. Because they came up with that fucking word. And really? they get mad when we call it. So yeah, soccer is a British word. Because what? football, football just meant any game played with feet and a ball. So, right. literally anything you played where you kicked a ball at all was football. Technically speaking, you could call croquet football because you put your foot on a ball for some moves. Uh, you, mm, yes? I don't know. I, I played if croquet a little bit touching, as a kid. If your ball is touching someone else's, you can put your foot on top of your ball and hit it with the mallet to send your opponent's ball careening off in the wrong direction. Oh, are you so, uh, we did that rule, but we didn't do the foot part. That probably explains why we weren't very good at it. Yeah, you were absolutely allowed to put your foot on it. Thus, by old definition standards, which we know people who are semantic about such shit love thus makes football croquet as well so they came right. up with soccer to differentiate that kind of football um that's not a toad i know you think it is i know um, it, it kind of looks like it should be one but i guess it is just a, a cd uh... yeah so when you get done with this you have to talk to that guy multiple times until he gives you a like when you go to leave to look for the guy talk to that guy in yellow a bunch until he gives you a yellow cone hmm. then go out because otherwise you're going to get really pissed and waste hours the d the but, dj no, no no the guy at the desk mm, okay you got to go looking for professor toad at one point and he will tell you oh he's out in the desert so you go looking in the desert and he will say something about it, and you're mm -hmm. like, okay, all that has been said need, that needs saying has been said. And then you go search in the desert, and nothing fucking happens. Right. And I'm, like, getting really annoyed, so I go back and talk to that guy again, like, maybe I missed something. He gives you an item that you're supposed to have, and you're like, ooh, ooh. Uh, it was just annoying. Um, yeah. But, yeah, football was... You know, soccer was called football, or football was called soccer in the UK first. And then they get mad when we call it soccer. Like, bitch, you came up with the word. You defined it. You said that, not me. Mm -hmm. And that's on yo ass. Yeah. Um, I feel like, a, at least from everything I've seen, a big part of British culture is just elitism. Yeah, it is. And that's why, like, uh, John Cleese really disappoints me now. Hmm. Because he really lives up that side of British culture. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> because, like, he complained about the Irish language recently. And I'm like, fuck you, dude. I, I do not like these toads with human proportions. Ugh. Yeah, nah. Those are gross. No, thank you. My other one, does that open? Oh. Oh, hey, it's a um, sniff it. Uh, oh, God. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's impact. Never mind. I, I thought we had a, a clip from uh whoo, I thought we finally had a clip from SmackDown. I was like, oh god, I can't but it oh, was boy. impact, so I can't make fun of it. Okay, okay. Uh, but it's sad when I'm like I kind of feel like at times I have PTSD from fucking 
wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I wonder if Mikey Ruckus, who does the AEW theme songs, is sitting at home right now like, I can't believe I wasted this is war on Wardlow. Right. When I could have had, when I could have had, this is war horse. Oh, <laughs> uh, I gotta say, I just, I get the, what's going on there, but man, the Wardlow theme really does not fit him. No, it should be more clinical sounding like, um, uh, like the, climax of an action movie that's not the like guitar riffy part yet that just yeah because that's his gimmick is he's that you know yeah i i uh i wish they just like um I don't know. It, it, it's kind of unfortunate when a wrestler's theme is doing more for their gimmick than they are. Yeah. Like, well, that's pretty much the only thing I g- genuinely like about Wardlow. Like, yeah, he's huge and whatever, but like, his his theme is catchy. It just doesn't it doesn't fit him. Um, I don't know who this dude is, but he really likes a meme I shared that's fifteen years old. Hmm. Like, this meme was old enough, I saw it in high school. <laughs> it's James Hetfield is uh, playing the guitar, like, jamming out. It says, give me few, give me five, give me daba Mm-hmm. And it's uh, making fun of his song where he's like, give me few, give me five, give me that which I desire. But it sounds like, give me few, give me five, give me daba <laughs> oh, It's 15 years old, my man. Calm down. Right. Oh, is there any worse thing than, like, you go to do the bed linens, like, you're washing your sheets or blankets or whatever, and you don't do it quite on time? And so, like, you gotta wait for them to dry before you can go to bed? Oh, God, yeah, that's freaking awful. Uh, God, that's the worst! Hold on, I gotta root the, the first, shadow again. The first, uh, uh action figure I want from AEW. Mm-hmm. Gotta be Pentagon. Oh yeah. I need some, need some Pentagon. Like, Pentagon, first of all, is the best. Like, I have a lot of favorites on AEW, so it's hard to, like, say that he is number one favorite. Um... I got the incense cone. Is that the thing I needed? Then go back to where that, like, sun platform is and throw it in the sand. Mmm. Okay. Um. So. It, uh, it's hard to say, like, oh, he's my number one favorite. Because then you see John Moxley, you're like, John Moxley. Because they're all so good yeah so it's hard to say one is better than anybody else it's fucking impossible yeah it's like hangman page you, you watch a hangman ray phoenix you're like ah then pentagon you're like ah yeah so i can only speak for visually yeah that's a, that's visually. the thing is that they've they've created a company where everybody is constantly one-upping each other and themselves like they're just going above and beyond to improve from their last performance, which was already great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at Ricky FTW got blocked on Twitter by Trapped. Mm. Uh, the guys who sing, or the guy that sings Headstrong, you know? Sure. You know the song I'm talking about? Yeah. And... Ricky FTW says he simply refused to take me on despite my preconception that he would be willing to take on anyone. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) That is such a good fucking line, man. This is the best fucking joke. Uh, wait, no, not this one. (laughs) 
I almost wrote Tusk instead of fuck. That's just that good. God damn. That is such a good joke. Let's see. So not that platform. Where's where's the one? <laughs> Out here. What would you do? <laughs> God, I can't tell this joke yet. Damn it. Good. Maybe soon. Who knows? I'm getting so many good jokes that I could be telling right now. Oh, uh, my friend Fubus just hit me with the best one. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Oh, hey. A tote. Whoa. Yeah. Ooh. Good mm -hmm. lord. So somebody says, what's a real American? What does it stand for? Who are real Russians? Who are real Chinese? Real Israelis? Who are even real and who are unreal? Those from Troll Fabs are unreal. They are just biobots, and my reality is quiet, fluid. And someone named Cassandra Fairbanks replied to that with, Real Americans are Red Sox fans, and Yankees fans should be deported. Uh... Then... They have a screenshot of Cassandra Fairbanks again posting, I am disgusted and upset. And it shows a picture of Black Lives Matter printed on a banner for the Red Sox outside their stadium, I guess. Uh, billboard. A 250-foot billboard from the team. And then, I'm really planning to get my Sox tattoo covered this week. I'm that done. Oh, wow. Mm. So Red Sox fans are real Americans until they say Black Lives Matter. Then, mm, then they're bad. Mm-hmm. Ah, oh, Shabazz Seafood! Hmm? My greatest disappointment is that I never got to go there when I lived in Savannah. Uh, soul foodie spelled with a ph and mm -hmm. uh d-i-e uh shouts out a lot of black owned restaurants and places right and savannah's best fried fish and shrimp is at shabazz seafood shabazz was uh right uh, it was in a place where i wasn't able to go over there all that often and it was one of those where you got in line, and if they ran out of food for the day, you were done. Like, that was it. Oh, yeah, that's the anything. good stuff. Yeah. I never got a chance to go over there because of timing and, like, everything. And, yeah, we lived there a long time, but, like, it was that fucking, like, out of the way for us. Because, no. like, I would love nothing. You can call the car back with your whistle. Um, oh, okay. There's nothing I wanted more than that fish. But part of the problem is my girlfriend does not eat seafood, period. Really? Yeah, no, she cannot stand seafood. Mm. So uh, the other problem was that, you know, because of that, we would have had to find something nearby for her to get. And she does she likes McDonald's, but I didn't feel right getting really nice food and her getting McDonald's. Yeah. Um, if she wasn't in town, I had no reason to go over to that part of town at all because her classes were right around the corner from it. So it was just this perfect storm of me not being able to go and get any of it. And you know me, I also wake up late in the day, so... Oh, sure. Um, it would have just been impossible for me to go there so i'm like oh i want to i want to try it so bad mm. so disappointing oh uh. damn <laughs> now that's how you sell a punch oh this dude takes a punch uh, uh. it tries to like hulk up and like ah Walks around a chair and then immediately face plants. Oof. I'll send it to you and Coco. Uh, damn it, hold <laughs> it's on. It's really good. I gotta reboot the Elgato once more. 
fucking Take audio keeps time. going out. There's no reason to rush it. Don't I just, it's frustrating, yourself. man. I have to. I don't know why the Elgato keeps cutting out the audio. It happens, sweetie. It should These not. It should happen. not for something I, I spent this much money on. I understand, but that's what life gave you. No, that's what the company Elgato gave me. How can they charge this much for such a piece of garbage? Uh. Listen, if I get a tin can off the street, I don't have to pay $150 for it, so why am I paying that for what is effectively that with some cables in it? Also, people are pointing out that, you know, person, woman, man, camera, TV were the, the items that were clearly immediately in Trump's vicinity when mm. he gave those examples. And I'm like, yeah, we know. Yeah, we're... We're not all stupid. But... And I'm sure there are a handful of people that need that spelled out for them. I get it. But, like, for the most part, it's really obvious to what, anybody watching. What specifically is the quote? Person, woman, man, camera, TV. Well, I mean, like, what What was it, the context? I have not heard it. Oh, you haven't? No. So he's giving an interview in the, like, Rose Garden or something. I'm not sure what part of the White House lawn it is, but it's clearly like outside uh, in the White House grounds. Mm -hmm. And he's talking about, well, I had to take a test, a cognitive test, where they give you five things. They say, okay, can you repeat the five things? And I would, it's person, woman, man, camera, TV. And like, I said it a lot faster than he did, because he's like, it's person, woman, man, camera, TV. And then they ask you, can you repeat that? And so I said, yeah, she has person, woman, man, camera, TV. And then they ask you a bunch of other things. And then they say, going back to that one question, do you remember what it was that we asked you? It's person, woman, and they said, wow, that's incredible. You got it all right. Nobody gets it all right in that or in the correct order. That's impressive. How, how did you do that? That I is because I'm, I'm, I, for one, I have, I call it good memory. And two, I'm, you know, Cognitively there. <laughs> that is the most basic IQ question you could come up with. It's not an IQ question. It's literally, and he complained that like the questions get harder as it goes along. So people looked up the kind of questions he uh, would have had to answer. And then it showed a picture of a cobra, an elephant, and an alligator. And says, name these animals. Oh. It's a test they give when you've been uh when they either think that you're suffering from dementia or if they think you have had brain damage right they don't give it to test your cognitive abilities to be like it's to see if your fucking brain is working mm. and at most people get the yeah you know, answers right yeah it's if you are function are... if your brain is functioning normally you should be able to that's the that's the actual test yeah like i was telling maddie last night it's very obvious that he went all right person what's the opposite of a person woman mm -hmm. what's the opposite of a woman man uh there's a camera right there camera and this is going to be on tv tv but it's very, and she looked at me and said, I like the subtle joke of person. Okay, what's the opposite of a person? Woman. Mm. I was like, I was hoping you would catch that. She said, that doesn't make it good. It's just well played. Yeah. And am I wrong? Oh, that is that's certainly... absolutely what he would think. I, I just... Ay, ay, ay. Guy is a... To put it in no uncertain terms, the guy is what we refer to as a Nimrod. A dunce. Do you know what... Do you know where a Nimrod came from? What? Uh... Well, see, if you were a Christian, you would know 
that Nimrod was a legendary hunter. And the reason we use it as a pejorative today to imply idiot is because Bugs Bunny called Elmer Fudd a Nimrod sarcastically. Mm. But, you know, Christians knew that, of course. Like, they know their Bible well enough to know who Nimrod was. They know about the legendary hunter of the Bible. Right? Right. Right. Uh, I remember one time, uh, I won't say who was involved, but I was talking with a very religious friend, and I challenged them, because they were trying to, like, argue that homosexuality was sinful, and gay marriage especially was sinful, and blah, 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 and I was like, okay, let me, uh, break that down for you. And I used the Bible to prove that not only is marriage not religious, that uh, so gay marriage therefore cannot be sinful, but that the Bible or God himself never says that you should get married. Never. Never once in the Bible does he say I was going to say, yeah, is that even a term? Because I never hear anybody like bringing out any verses or anything when they say that shit. They will bring out a verse that is incorrectly translated mm -hmm. uh, to say that gays are bad, but only because it's mistranslated. Yeah. What the verse translated to English currently says is, He who lays with a man as he does with a woman shall be put to death, and blah, blah, blah. Right. The actual verse says, He who lays with a boy, meaning mm. kids. Because otherwise, lesbians are perfectly non-sinful, but gay men are. Right, because, I mean, the, the obviously lesbians can't, uh, they can't do anything, right? They don't got the, the, the stuff for it. it. It's just a phase anyways, you know, you don't got you don't gotta tell me. Yeah, like, it's a mistranslation. Yep. So, the only real anti-LGBT content in the Bible comes from one, I repeat, singular one of uh, Jesus' followers, mm -hmm. one of the apostles. And he wasn't even one of the ones that was, like, really part of the group, you know? Well, that's always my problem, too, is when people use verses out of context, it's like, okay... You're saying that as if that was directly stated by God, but it's like, uh, I feel like that wasn't the case, and I feel like if you checked on most of those quotes, in reality, they were done by someone who either A, was not supposed to be given the credence of God in the Bible, or B, was, uh, you know, maybe supposed to be the person you weren't supposed to listen to. Well, he was one of the apostles, but he was also the, the apostle that was very hellfire and brimstone about everything whereas mm. the rest of the apostles were just like yeah Jesus is really cool he was a great guy he was like don't you know judge people and then Paul comes along and he's like the gays will die like mm. and like he was sent to kill Jesus so yeah just saying yeah I mean you wouldn't listen to what Judas was saying either would you though uh in the Apocrypha, Judas was doing what he was told to by Jesus, and well, the guilt I, he felt yeah. for... Like, I... It makes a lot more sense that he would do that. It, it, anyway. Oh boy. Oh boy, solving puzzles in the desert. Alright, twins, Already needles, has. twin needle, is, guys, it's bunt, I know this one, it's a bee drill. Twin needle. Um. But, yeah, um. Uh. Key Trump campaign donors step back from supporting 
Uh, load properly. Uh, God bless America. Mm. Uh, President's 2020 election bid. Robert Mercer. Mm. A billionaire hedge fund manager donated 15 million with his wife Diana to a number of organizations that supported Trump in 27 or 2016. Now he is stepping away. The Mercers are. You know how the right wing likes to say that anytime the left does anything, it's Soros. Uh, enjoy your 15 minutes of raunchy jokes, Coco says. Yep, you're good. Um, After okay. dark, so, activated. So what if somebody started talking to you and suddenly meet and fuck graphics manifest around you? Huh. I don't know. Uh, but, so the Mercers, like, you know how anytime the right, left does anything, the right comes streaming, Soros-funded terrorists, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. The Mercers are the right version, or the right wing version of that, but actually so. Right, or wait, no, no, that's where the. That's where it's shit. And, um, they're like even above the Cokes. Mm. Like, if you lose the support of the Mercers, you might as well give up. Hmm. Um,. So, yeesh. He's kind of screwed. Yeah. Um. Well, that's the thing is that, like, he's just gone so far right. And he's trying to make this huge bid to, like, be considered the law and order president. But, like, he, I don't think anyone except for him and Barr agree with what they're doing. Yeah. Because it's, it's absolutely absurd. It's ridiculous. It's, it's like... You guys can pretend like it's not fascism, but like it's if it walks like a fascist and it sends in federal unidentified troops doing uh, undocumented arrests like a fascist, well, don't know. What Give me an idea of how big uh, the Mercers are. Mm -hmm. They brought uh, Cambridge Analytica to the fold. Uh, they brought in Kelly and Conway. They brought in David Bossy. They brought in Steve Bannon. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's how big they are. That's how... That's who the Mercers are. And... Uh... They are now stepping away from them. Um... Are they just going neutral then? Or are they switching... Switching over to the other side. Uh, Perhaps funding an independent, even? It looks like they're just not going either direction. Yeah. Like, they donated to a pro-Trump super PAC, mm -hmm. but not a lot by their state, by their standards. Right. Um, and yeah, it looks like, and that's just from one member of the family. Mm. Um. I see what's going so on. So the Trump here. campaign is a hundred and thirteen million dollars, oh, whereas damn. Biden reveals it has a hundred and nine million. Um, right. And how much money do you think the Trump campaign wasted on that stupid ass fucking uh, attempt at a rally that went nowhere? Oh God, too much. Especially because they expected such a m large, like um turnout compared to what they got like uh just uh, so much so much they built an outdoor arena yeah for the, for the, the runoff arena. crowd that had nothing 
No, it was just fully... They set up a whole stage and everything, and it was fully wasted. Uh, it's a thing, also, it, thing of beauty. My, also, the governor of my state that I'm currently in, North Carolina, told the Trump campaign, um, you guys may not have a damn rally here right now. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and he Trump also... was like, fine, we'll go to Jacksonville. And now they've canceled the Jacksonville rally because Trump's like, I just don't think it's a good idea. Sure. I mean, he's finally, like, it's finally dawning on him somewhere deep in that thick skull of his that, uh, maybe oh, no, it's, it's not. not safe of him as a fucking 74-year-old to be uh, ignoring a goddamn, um, an, a goddamn, uh, pandemic. I think it's that his campaign is showing him the poll numbers. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh... You're losing, and if you don't change something right now, you will get thought joke or fucked kicked out, and you know what's waiting for you when that happens, right? You will go to jail. Period. Is, that is what will happen. Like he is. But he just had a further failure in that. He, um... Tried to sue to have his tax records and some other records kept from the SDMY. Mm -hmm. And... He... Failed. It did... They have to turn them over. And he is livid. Because he knows he's not doing well in the polls. And I... By the way, if you're old enough to vote... Ask for send in paperwork for your mail in ballots now. Yes. Do yes. it now. Yep. I'm gonna Get do that. that. Shit in. Actually, I'm gonna do that right after the stream because I forgot again. Ugh. Mail in uh, ballots. Maddie and I already sent ours in. We're on our. We're waiting for them to come in. Well. Um. And I, when it gets in, I will fill it out and mail it off. Mm-hmm. Um. And keep in mind that it takes up to two weeks each way right now for yeah. those to get it up to. So the election day if you're voting by mail is not, in fact, uh, whatever day in November. It's October 20th. Get those in. Important. Get... It's pretty much the only real, like, ability you have to make any kind of change. Although, uh, in reality, like, votes cool and all that, but really, like, monetary donations to the candidate that you are, uh, you are rooting for are probably going to mean more in the long run, unfortunately. I mean, if you can do either or, if you can do both, wonderful, but at least vote. Yes. It's free. Minus the cost of shipping the envelopes. Oh, yeah. Which, I mean, that's like less than a dollar total. And you get a sticker! Yeah! So, do it. Do it. Fucking, like, and again, it won't be enough to make the proper change in this country that we need. That will only come through either somebody that we trust stepping up to the plate and actually fucking trying or through protest but we can at least dull the fangs that are on our throat for a vote yeah like there there's still going to be fangs around our throat but we can at least dull them four toads right now, now that's the best we can fucking hope for Do what now? Four toads. I've only found two. Oh, you gotta ones. start with the bedrooms. You gotta read the walls in the bedrooms. Ah, oh, shit. Uh. Starting with the one on the far, far left of the desk. Oh, boy. Well, I'm going to do that next time then. I'm gonna call it call it a night now. Um, but yeah. Alrighty. Uh, we will be back tomorrow with some more. Uh, some more schedule changes coming up, which I mentioned on the last stream, but... Gonna kind of relegate it to three or so days a week. Um, probably do gonna start doing this game on the weekdays, Tuesday, Thursday, and then Friday or Saturday, 
whichever one works better for that particular week, I'll be doing something that's more popular. Not, I'm not gonna like play anything I wouldn't want to play anyways, but I'm gonna kind of try and gear towards more uh, more views and such. So it will be on the schedule, which you can find down below on the uh, browser version of the stream or on just the channel's main page, which I will keep updated as best I can, subject to change as always. But yes, please, if uh, if you haven't, follow, because that would greatly help me and the channel, and it's free for you. Uh, thank you for watching now, in the past or in the future with the past broadcast tab, or on the Twitch Archive channel on YouTube, which you can find down below here on the browser version, along with my personal YouTube, where I'm going to be posting some things coming up soon, I'm working on them, and my Twitter, where I tweet out when I'm going live. Um, hmm, anything else? Oh, yeah. Mail-in ballots. Vote. Vote. Do it. Any last words, Andrew? Um, if I'm reading this right, and I think I am, we AEW finally broke one million views. Nice. It's just from uh, the Young Bucks. Mm -hmm. And it's a picture of them with their hands raised after that match Wednesday night. Right. With the caption, one million plus. Nice. Awesome. Well, that's a good note to end I will, everything on. I will verify tomorrow. Certainly, yeah. Uh, you'll, you'll hear more about that in other wrestling news tomorrow. But that's a good note for us to end on. Go vote, people. Good night. Vote. 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 <laughs>